Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast, Master Random the Podcast. This episode brought to you by Mosa's Joint, located right in the heart of Agatha City, and they are serving up quite possibly the island's best local chow music, happy hours, and all around vibes. You never been? You should go. Go experience it. You. You will get lost in time there. Uh, enjoy their ever-changing lunch and dinner specials. Um, or you can do the burger like me. Sometimes I go appetizers only and just drink the beers that they provide. They have a long list of beers that you can drink all night long. Uh, check them out. Of course, not all night, all night long. But check them out daily from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. until 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, no discount code, but I'll be giving away some free stuff from them uh, every month that they're they're on the sponsorship role. So check them out over in Haganya and uh, enjoy some good chow. This episode also brought to you by Dimension Systems. They are Guam's premier computer and IT consulting company creating solutions with technology. Say you're looking to upgrade your business uh, in system integration, web design, computer networking, they can provide that to you. And they have been since 1987 providing the best service and support to their customers. Uh, they're so committed to offering the best IT solutions and are consistently focused on their customers' needs. I've literally only scratched the very, very surface of what they can provide for you. So go and check them out at dimensionsystems.com or check out their Guam office over at the DFS Plaza in Tumuning. I like to say right across the the skate park and the elementary school. You'll see it. It's it's there. This episode also brought to you by Stroll Guam. Go and download the Stroll Guam app today. One of our longest Supporting sponsors, um, go uh, to your app store and whether it's the app, the Apple app store, or the Google app store, download it right now and you can literally download it and give yourself access to the most convenient, affordable and safest way to get around the island without having to drive your car. Um, it's that easy. And now that you're a Master Random podcast listener, you can save $10 off your next ride by using the code MASTERGU, M-A-S-T-E-R-G-U, and save $10 off your next ride. And finally, but not least, finally, but not least, Tommy's Pizza. This episode brought to you by them, located right in the heart of Agatha City and Surf. Whoa, serving up quite possibly the best New York style pizza on the island. You can get the usual pepperoni pizza or go for the shroom town. Sauce and toppings made completely of mushrooms. Pretty badass. So go check them out on West O'Brien Drive in Hagania City or call them. Call to order at 9227-437 and go eat good pizza and now my next guest with an s on the show charles rapatis and johnny arceo charles is the founder and brewmaster of three cheese brew, uh, beers based out of los angeles california he is a guam native um just trying to bring back to the locals and providing them with good beer and trying to change that that sort of palate that we grew up off of um this is it's it's a it's going to be a culture shift in the beer culture. And Johnny Arceo's been on the podcast before. He is the brewer of Antigua Brewing and looking to to start his own microbrewery um, and build it here on Guam. So challenges in in both. We discuss both. We drank a, a variety of beers. Um, six of them that we drank were actually brewed by these gentlemen themselves. And uh, great conversation. I try not to stray too much off course, and um, I, I think I did well for for having for having some beers. So if you're if you're a local uh, um, 
if you're into craft beers i suggest go open one up for yourself right now and uh enjoy this episode with charles rapatis and johnny arceo on the podcast check it out everybody Welcome to the show, Johnny. Welcome back. Thank you, Charles. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, it's we haven't talked about beer in a while, and I'm, I'm glad we get to get this chance. Before we started here, we were talking about how there really is, there really are no places to actually um, have a conversation and drink at the same time without having to speak over music. And then we brought up Kitchen Lingo, and they did really change the game absolutely man it's um it's 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 crazy even from the restaurant game even eating even eating fancy food it's fucking nuts yeah 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 right yeah i mean how how often do you guys go there do you do you go there every time you come back yeah you know what this trip i haven't really went there as much just because we're like so busy you know i just busy getting this whole jujitsu thing ready this whole beer event also ready. you were involved with with uh that whole weekend then huh yeah, yeah, but I wasn't really a part of the jujitsu thing. But then, because I do jujitsu, I like to participate in it. I see. I um, see. But besides that, too, I've always been at spas, just making sure all the beers are ready for the Sunday event. Right. So, doing some one-off kegs, just trying to figure out, hey, what are we gonna do to do something cool? Right. Like that. What is that? That Faha Stout. Man, that was just like out of the blue we're just like hey man we need we got four days to do something let's let's do something and you can you can manipulate the taste of a beer over four days like that not really we had to kind of <laughs> depend put it in a keg and just keep shaking it yeah. to kind of like introduce the infusion of that coconut a lot faster how does that work though i mean you have you have the brewed beer ready and so it's just like a regular l so we have a back in california where we brewed the beer we have a maybe about 200 gallons of this 12% stout. Yeah. And then we transferred it to four bourbon barrels. So um, while we were shipping beers from here. Wait, a bourbon barrel? Sorry. Like Sorry, I don't get the, Okay, so it's like a, it's just a. It's like a. Wooden, aging, it's a wooden barrel? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's how the, <clears throat> that's what you would age. Like, bourbon in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this one is a uh, Buffalo Trace. Like, I think it's like a. 10 year barrel or something so we aged it but we didn't it's, it hasn't been aging for like a full year with beer just maybe like three four months yeah yeah just because uh we wanted to send something cool to guam besides just ipas pellels and um the wheat beer so we're just like hey dude let's do something cool just like just send one keg over there to guam and then see what people think about it right and it's like a 12 percent stout like full body, chewy, viscous, decadent, like tons of chocolate flavor. Okay, every so time we were so. your guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You, you guys were the first ones to try it. Like people in California never even got to try it yet. Like uh, we were planning to bottle a bunch of it, but. Okay, we is our stout supposed to taste like soy sauce? Because every time I drink a stout, it always it always feels like it has that sort of uh, like a like I'm like I opened a bottle of soy sauce and I just went go go go. It just has that viscous texture of soy sauce you know what when you think of soy sauce then probably it's gonna <laughs> taste like soy sauce right but uh i don't know i think it's just uh if it's maybe acidic because a dark beer the acidity kind of how is it supposed goes to down. taste like a little roasty a little chocolatey um so so stouts are usually like chocolate stouts or uh, yeah, or more roastiness. Um, yeah, forgive forgive my my yeah. ignorance on, on no, no, all of it. Yeah, it's cool because sometimes I I still learn, right? Like I still don't know what's the big difference between porters and stouts. Mm -hmm. And then when I just ask somebody from like Minnesota and stuff, they're just like, "Oh, uh, porters are less roasty and a lighter <laughs> lighter than a." high alcohol beer right? what does that mean i know i'm like well then all my stouts were super sweet because i i don't really care for the the roast right but am i gonna start calling my my beers a uh, porter right but, but it's just like a so it doesn't matter of the part of the process it became a stout that would turn it into a porter 
No, you know what? There's like I try to Google the debate and everything too, and people mm. people don't know. You know, like nobody knows. Right. I guess it's just what you want to call your beer. I think the history of stout was everything that was not a light beer yeah. with a low ABV. That's what, at least the general ahead, word I've read. But then, you know, when I do my stouts, there's still so much sugar left over that I just sparge it again and make a porter out of it. Just yeah. So I don't waste grain because grain is so much to cost, so much cost to come out here. Right. So I yeah. forgot what that method was called, but. You can make if there's leftover sugars in the the grain, like a party guy or something. A party guy, there you yeah. go. That's what I didn't want to do. No, you're good. Yeah, party guy. There you go. Or you can just sparge it again, make it a black IPA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it, even though you mess up, you can sort of still manipulate it to for it to become something else. Not really. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I don't know. Once you do that, you can probably change it to something else but now you're changing the style a little bit yeah it's like like when i first tried making a stout with uh you know like homebrew when i was homebrewing what i'm used to is getting maybe 80 85 percent sugars out of my beer mashing process but then when you try to make a beer so high in gravity which is like a lot of sugar um your percentage of extracting sugar goes down so it's like from 85 percent to like 60 so you gotta keep it's a huge drop yeah yeah i don't know why maybe because the sugars go through so much grain when you're trying to like drain it out so you basically have to keep adding to keep the percentage that you want yeah you gotta put like maybe double the amount of grains just to make uh something over 10 percent or something hmm yeah, that's crazy. Or you can cheat and add sugar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After you do the conversion, yeah. you know, make up for it. You know, right, right, right. Oh, man, off by a few percent. <laughs> yeah, you put that, <laughs> but then now you're changing a bunch of stuff now, <clears throat> and it just like ah, oh, man. Yeah, so. it seems very extremely meticulous. So when you were first starting out home brewing, when when did that, where did that spark up for you? Uh, okay. Starting a home brew, like maybe I'm not sure what year that is, bro. Maybe like 2013. Wow. So how much of the science did you know? No, nothing, nothing. at all. Okay. I didn't even know how beer was made at the time. So bear, we went to a, a brewery that was down the street from me and it was like their second anniversary. So they had some beers that were archived and stuff. And then they had this beer. It was like, you couldn't buy it unless you drank it at the tasting room. So, and I was like, I saw the price of it. It was like 60 bucks for one bottle, like the size of a champagne bottle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who the hell is going to buy freaking beer at that price? Do 60 right. bucks. It was like 12% also. Right. But then like, as I read it more, it says like, oh, okay. Aged in like barrels, right? Like bourbon barrels. Also, it had like wax on it with like a leather tag i was like damn like even though you do all this i still wouldn't pay 60 bucks right <laughs> but um yeah they opened it i tried it it smelled good like fig some like dark raisins and stuff like that it was an old l like the style was called old l like you were able to choose out like mm, figs <laughs> you know and i don't eat figs dude. yeah me either. i've never tried it but <laughs> but it's like it reminds you smell me the figs <laughs> yeah but it reminds Think me of a Newtons. kid, dude. That's exactly it. Like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, man. It brought me to a time where I'm like, this reminds me of Big Newtons, dude. You know, with even like the little bread and crackery taste or whatever. But yeah, but it was boozy. Like when I say boozy, is like I can feel like heat from alcohol. Like, okay. you know, like. Um, but I was like, man, okay, yeah, like this thing tastes good. And it's like kind of warm also where the taste lingers it doesn't go away you're not drinking it. it's not flat and watery like so you're not talking longer. temperature warm it's more of a warm warmer taste yeah yeah okay. so and it's like also medium medium to thick bodied where it's like man i don't yes, know yes. what kind of warm so, drink yeah <laughs> so know. so you describe it how you are now what was really going through your mind <laughs> with the first time you tried it i was like oh man i'm getting buzzed dude like <laughs> holy cow like i only had one glass and i'm like you know what this is cool dude like drinking beer i've never had beer like that before right but um but were you thinking about how you how you were describing it how it was making you feel or 
Is just it? like the taste of it, and then the taste of it was just original to me. Yeah. And then have after you been that, drinking uh, craft beers before that? No, man. The only craft beer I probably drank was like Sierra Nevada <laughs> Celebration, right? Yeah. And this is like a winter beer that they sell at Costco, <laughs> and it tastes like shit, dude. That's yeah. all we had on Guam too, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was like so bitter, but that was the only drink. That's the only beer we were drinking once we ran out of Heineken and Budweiser and Coronas and stuff. Yeah. So, um, only because Bear always brought the craft beers to the party that no one cared about. So he knew no one would drink his beers. <laughs> so, but if there was nothing else left, we would drink his shit and it would be like, oh, wow, dude, this thing is potent, dude. <laughs> Should have been drinking this since the beginning. Can't say the same now if you were to bring something to a party. That's the first thing everyone's going to drink. Right? Yeah, it's going to get left. Reals, dude. <laughs> it's like, uh, any of that craft beer still in there? <laughs> <laughs> but that's where it's changing now, you know? Now they got to hide the coolers. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if, but for me to get into homebrewing or, like, think about it, um, I just thought it was cool that you can make a beer taste something good, like a dessert-like, and then still get buzzed without drinking four to six cans of it you know right right so i was like okay you know like how does there was, beer there make? was sort of a sophistication to it yeah yeah, yeah. an art yeah right craft right? craft yeah <laughs> i know, I know. So we don't beat up the word we, craft we, we were headed there <laughs> we'll use artful beer <laughs> <laughs> but yeah after after that i had a friend who um home brewed he was an attorney you know he knew how to homebrew, so I hit him up, and I was like, hey, man, like, I'm interested in this homebrewing thing. And he was like, it's a lot of work, dude, but if you want to learn, you can come over. We'll homebrew together, and if you like it, like, I'll help you out, guide, kind of guide you. So two weeks later, he was, like, building up a recipe, and I'm like, just do research. Because once I sink my teeth into something, I'm like in you know yeah so um, i was like okay this is cool i just wanted to kind of get like uh like learn some of the terminology and jargon that he would use right because sparge who the hell knows what sparge is or right. vorloft and still, stuff right still don't know yeah exactly so i was always, always like <laughs> I learned research that this today thing. just at this moment very moment yeah so i would just research this thing <clears throat> and kind of get like a process i would youtube it just to see how things go uh-huh um and then yeah we're trying to brew a stout the first time and i was like well okay yeah i kind of get what he's doing you know and i thought it was cool and then like once we did it i was like it's not that bad so just more time than anything yeah it took about like six six hours but the whole time was cool because we're all drinking while we're waiting for this thing <laughs> yeah so so how is how does the process differ john you can jump in too um how does the process differ when you're going from i guess just a regular Parallel to a stout, as I guess a lighter beer to a much darker beer. It's, uh, it's pretty I, much kind of the same process. Uh, you know, you do your, your methodology is the same. It's just a lot of ingredients, and then, man, I don't even know where to start. I'll let Charles handle this. Parallel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess basically you start with like lighter colored malts, right? Okay. Not as, not as roasted or caramelized or um, burnt or anything, but. Uh, I would basically start off with a bunch of brewer's malt, like two row, the basic, the basic malt that's kind of kiln. What do you call it? Kiln or kiln something? roasted. Yeah. It depends. Smoke sometimes putting into putting it by a fire. The yeah, process yeah. of drying out and uh, malting the grains pretty much. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like when you're making fried rice, you start with the rice first. Right. <laughs> and then you start putting the other stuff in it. So. Um, yeah, I just start with like the white rice. I, I, I always start with the meat, dude. <laughs> we can talk about meat. It's like our, rare, our, our, medium our, rare. <clears throat> you know the roasting as okay. far as for stouts. Like okay. you have like rare, medium rare, medium. You know, going all the way to to well done. That's like roasted. You can start off super pale, and it won't be as chocolatey as figgy. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And then you can work your way to the more darker roast, which come out more coffee, chocolate. And that's where the art form comes in. You kind of have to know what each property, what properties each grain has, and what you want out of your final beer. Right. From a pale, from a pale ale to a, a stout, which is like totally different sides of the spectrum. But the process is still the same. It's just ingredients and um, 
Uh, the brewing day process is pretty much the same. So the darker the roast would be the darker the beer. Yeah. Or the longer the roast. Is it dark roast? Light roast? Yeah, is it like, like coffee? It's like they have like a color scale yeah. to okay, it. Like okay. Coffee, yeah. But um, yeah, the darker the roast, usually it would taste more burnt, more roasty, more coffee-like flavor. Uh-huh. While the lighter, the more sugary, toffee. Bready. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more of it. It would it would be more tuned towards taste rather than taste and color pot- potency, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol content. Yeah. yeah. So the more sugar, <clears throat> the more alcohol you'll get out of it. Okay. Or the more grain, but it can't be an unfermentable, right? An un- unfermentable grain, which is like it's kind of been roasted past its conversion kind of Dumbness. thing yeah. It's like, ah, yeah nah dude that one <laughs> that one was over to fire directly <laughs> that, was, that was like the leftover <laughs> spillage going that fell from the barbecue yeah, pit it's the like, burnt rice <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's like i don't want that part of the fried rice <laughs> For real. unless you're gonna add like bullish soy sauce and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's for texture <laughs> I don't know. Our grandma was the was famous at a. You take the leftover red rice, and you uh, then she adds bacon and onions to it, and that's that's fried rice. The next day. The yeah. next day. Spare ribs. <clears throat> mm. Miss you, grandma. Damn, <laughs> miss my red rice, fried rice. Damn. But you know, a lot of things also is uh, especially if you're going to enter your beer into competitions, it's uh-huh. this style it has to be this um, ABV, it has to be this color. You know, if you're going to do a pillow, it has to be within a certain parameter. And these things can be actually, like, tested to the exact point, yeah, right? They have scales, IBU scales for bitterness, SRM for how Color. dark it is. Yeah. ABV for the alcohol percentage. That's that's more on if you're going to put into, like, a, a competition where you have actual judges judging your beer to style. You know, but, it, I mean, if you're a home brewer or uh, it doesn't even matter if you're a, a professional brewer, you, people are nowadays pushing the boundaries as away from the styles and just like Omnipolo did a, a beer that they put like uh, actual uh, french fries and hamburgers into the boil. I've seen fried chicken. Fried chicken, yeah. Fried chicken yeah. and waffles. <clears throat> I saw a picture on, on your Facebook. You put marshmallows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I put that into the boil to kind of give it like a vanilla taste to it. Yeah. Yeah. Add some sugar to it so it's higher in alcohol once it ferments. Right. Um excited for that one but the out. sugar oh it's oh it's still in brew that's that's like something new it's already done fermenting okay but we're just kind of like letting it settle and develop a little bit more because because it is a higher gravity beer which is a strong higher alcohol beer we kind of want the we want it to mellow out because right now it's very busy uh based based on like um malts wise i probably use like nine different malts in that beer so what happens to what happens to the uh, to the actual thing like the marshmallows, the fried chicken, the, the I don't know. I, haven't said I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the marshmallow yeah. just melts. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like the fried chicken and the and the French fries and the hamburgers, like, dude. I, don't I guess it's it, it just parts become like it. sediment. Does it become sediment of in the beers? Like, oh look, backwash. <laughs> it's like a, Whatever like, solid would probably look, just it's a tomato. Stay. I know, <laughs> but I I would think you would get some of that sort of like filter it right yeah but you i think you would get french fry taste and that oily taste yeah yeah i would think also if you filter beer it will take away the taste right uh sometimes okay because i do i have a beer that i filtered and a beer that was unfiltered the same thing i like the one that wasn't un- the one that was unfiltered better yeah because you don't take out because yeast adds flavor too Yeast and you got the hop oils in there. So you're basically like watering it down almost too, right? No, I think the alcohol percentage. Oh shoot! I, for stay. some reason, I was thinking water filter. It's just for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. okay. So it'd be it would like just be poured through like a cheesecloth or something. There's so many like different that. ways okay. to do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. There's like tablets that'll like suck up all the proteins and oh. um. To and, style, they would want that, right? For yeah. a West Coast IPA, they like that clarity. But um, northeast coast, that's why you got all that hazies. That's why they call it. I know that's what they use is hazies. Mm-hmm. But because of the way the process is, they don't really care for how, how clear the beer is. They want a lot of the stuff that is in suspension for you to drink. 
Right. But you know, a lot they, of the, they want it gritty. They want uh, not necessarily gritty, just more uh, opaque, I guess. Uh, they, they're not going for not opaque, but they're not going for hazy. When you say clarity, it's like looking. You through can see it. through it, yeah. like but you like hold this up is hazy you know, right here. Yeah. But I like the way hazy looks because it kind of like holds light and it has a, a nice hueing glow to it. Yeah, yeah. It what do, like what are we drinking here? Oh, sorry. This is, should be a. I should have started off with this. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. Excuse me. This is a clean saison. Super right? clean. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very good. It was a Dupont strain. It it actually uh, lagged out, so it didn't uh, attenuate as much. Is this something that you did yourself? No. Oh, okay. No, I don't sell my beer. <laughs> I put in kegs. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 you did it though, right? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I brewed it. Yes, yeah, sorry, okay, I thought okay. I was selling it. Impressive. It is really good. Thank you. Use local mangoes from my mom's house. Oh, this has mangoes. Thanks, mom, for picking. Yeah, I only put uh, one pound per gallon, which wasn't enough. So I need to up it up a more. Yeah, it's hard to get mango flavor. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Vitamix that. But thing that's one of the sweetest fruits there is, right? Yeah, but it's crazy, man. <laughs> Did you say yeah. Vitamix? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> did for on Sunday. Yeah. 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 Blend that thing. In part two. Uh, yeah, you just Vitamix it, put in a strainer, throw it in there. Right. Cold crash it. And you gotta it's a lot of work. Right. So, no, go ahead. It enlighten me, dude. Yeah. So you just get one of those mesh bags, put purified or pureed mango. Um only I use a mesh bag just because we did it in the keg. But if we were going to do it, like, in our system, I would have just dumped the whole puree in there cold. Like, leave it there for a few days, then set the temperature to, like, 35 or something. Make all the hard matter, protein, whatever, just fall out. And then just, like, drain it from the top of it. And then that's how we would, like, uh, separate the, the solids from the liquid. Mm. But because we're on a time crunch here, we're just, like... Dude, just leave it. That's why, like, when we're pouring it, you can kind of see, like, some, like... Sediment. Puree. But, shit, people drank the shit out of it. Right. <laughs> it was a hit. Shit, I liked it. Yeah, I bet. That was the right. Locals first. Locals right. first was the base beer for that. I yeah. See. So, what, what made you decide that brewing, out of home brewing, that you wanted to start your own thing? Uh, shoot. So I would make it, I would start with a five gallon batch. Then I would not end up with enough to give friends and drink for myself. Then we went up to 10 and then still, and then, cause I would call my boys like, Hey man, like, cause I hate the fucking cleaning process of it. Right. <laughs> Takes forever, bro. I think it's, uh, you have to work as you go, but I don't know. I just geek out on the brewing part. I don't care about that. So I w I've always bought equipment and spent a lot of money on anything that would make brewing process like faster. Uh huh. But also like brew days are good too. Cause you just call your boys so they can help you clean. Yeah. But at the same time you would drink. <laughs> so, so and they always brought the good shit. Killing, so. <laughs> killing two birds with one stone there. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like of course, when they help you, you gotta like share your beers with the boys too. Right, right. you so gotta break out the break out the secret stuff you've been holding out on, dude. And then I would, <laughs> after brew day, like after everything's done fermenting, um, I would only end up with like four bottles or something. And like all the ten boys that came up to help, they got like the rest of it. And I'm like, but we had to like increase this to like thirty gallons. Went thirty gallons, and then we're just like, you know, man, like, uh, we might have to invite less boys <laughs> <laughs> or make more beer. That's a that's a, that's a quick. Uh, we're, we need a quick solution. <laughs> Call five of them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, dude. But everybody just wanted to come, dude. You know, so it's like, and these guys were yeah, like you're creating a together. culture, like a little ecosystem of of drinkers yeah and these guys love it too man like if anything like they tell me also what's good they share so that's how i get my inspiration right for you to make really good beers you gotta drink good beers hmm. and uh you brew what you like and that's the best way that you can like critique people i mean you can get critiqued right yeah you ever yeah. got i mean did you ever get any bad feedback especially from the boys right yeah it's so like, oh, bro Dude. No, no, no. The boys are like, oh man, this thing is great. Sometimes you don't trust their, uh, For their real. you know. But you gotta yeah, give it the, to the typical, guys. the typical uh, Guam uh, uh, root you on no matter what. <laughs> oh, don't worry, boy, you did good. I struck out three times. <laughs> what are you talking about? Bro, you almost won. <laughs> you almost won. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta <laughs> aim for effort. <laughs> That happens so many times. I don't know how many times I contaminated my beer with wild yeast, and the boy is like, I don't see anything wrong with this. This is cherry. I'm like, okay, drink it, because I was just going to dump it. <laughs> I'll take it. Dude. My guinea pigs. But yeah, man. From there, we're just like, dude, why don't we just start a brewery? You know, like most uh, home brewers, they just start and see if they can start selling, you know? Right. Um, But... I, I I think I got enough good feedback where it kind of like sparked it for me, you know. How many beers did you start with? At least, you know, at, at least flavors did you start with to be like, all right, yeah, time to sell it. Or were you just decide, well, I'm just gonna sell this. Dude, I I messed up a lot, man. Like the first beer I bought was just a kit. I think it was like a like a like a partial. So it's like some grain, some syrup, right? And that's like the easiest way to start brewing. And it's like a kit that you can buy online and it has instructions. It takes you about two hours just to make it or something, right? Two to three hours. But, um, yeah, does was, it come in a, uh, a box like this yeah. big? Yeah. <laughs> Extract yeah. kits. Yeah. And then, like, my second beer was like after reading online blogs and stuff, I was like, hey, dude, I know how to make Black Tuesday, right? Which is a 18% beer and it's a stout. And I was like, shit let's do it dude it's easy I, I know how to read directions right and it <laughs> just came out like shit infected <laughs> sour and it had like, like what, do, what do you johnny said infected too mm-hmm. what is what does infected mean when you get like some wild bacteria growing in there so, so you can tell like if you open up the the help me out fermenter like, fermenter, fermenter yeah. and you see shit growing <laughs> like pellicles and stuff it yeah. looks like like a freaking man of war sometimes you want that for sour like beers <laughs> but for all the other beers you see that that's a no no yeah. yeah. like you left the rice in the rice pot too long right <laughs> <laughs> Pro- probably. I like your rice analogies man. <laughs> <laughs> you brought up the rice dude I'm so stuck on the rice dude. <laughs> yeah dude so but yeah if, and then you just taste it once you taste it you're like oh dude sour yeah soy sauce light <laughs> <laughs> That's not me, Kiko man, fucking style, right? Or soy sauce. He <laughs> start putting it in the soy sauce body, like, uh, just, just like, use this on your rice. Fuck it, dude. It's too sour. <laughs> dude, we'll like, give it uh, to the boys. This yeah, is the cleaning yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. Bro, that's the Finidenny. Uh, Finidenny yeah. beer. <laughs> Put too much vinegar. In right? beer. All you gotta do is add uh, freaking onions and uh, donny peppers, dude. You don't need the vinegar. Dude. <laughs> Sorry, sour. Dude. Man, I just saw. I just found out they sell. Um, they sell Finidenny to go, not to go off topic too too much, but yeah, they sell Finidenny to go now, with complete with onions. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, is that the Filipino one in the glass jar? It's a glass jar. It's like blue. Oh, it's like a it was glass and then it's blue. It has like a blue cover on top. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know who who sells it, but I don't know, man. I don't know about selling that on Guam. <laughs> yeah, or just. <laughs> but I mean, it's a good like visitor takeaway. Yeah, oh, true. I'd rather true, true, sell true. them a recipe. Then they're like, oh, here, here's a recipe. <laughs> like, like, it's super easy. <laughs> but boy, you need the local lemon, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't get that here. Man. Ah, okay, okay. Went off track. Uh, sour beers, how you can tell it's sour, bacteria. So where does it, infected? There it is. Yeah. Uh, where, where does it come from? Like, so it's just become, it just comes from maybe yeast that's been sitting too long or? Well, it depends if you're going to sour it purposefully then you let add different bacteria that create uh, lactic acid that's if you want a sour beer you if you want to infect it with bacteria but if you're going to make a clean beer like a ipa or a stout and it tastes sour that's a unwanted yeast that's in it and bacteria that's in the air so you can't just turn it into a different beer when when it is <laughs> it tastes bad man <laughs> okay, okay. You're trying to make okay. a sour beer like you can tell like rotten you can eggs really tell oh, okay. rotten eggs okay yeah. i don't know if anyone chat yeah right? yeah exactly i've opened up one and it smelled like rotten eggs my my second batch ever i was like oh my god it got infected <laughs> never tell anyone about this <laughs> and i just mentioned it, Dump oh, no. it. <laughs> dude yeah i don't know it's like it's also like if your equipment isn't clean enough um super hard super hard to um um like if you if you don't use the right sanitizers and stuff like that you know right I'm, i mean johnny was mentioning in the first podcast that that we did that just the yeast in the air or the bacteria in the air mm-hmm. can affect both your product 
Yeah. And so that's why you're having a problem, right? Because you don't know how to, you can't really control. Well, I brew outside. So, I mean, if I'm racking or if I'm doing anything outside and it's, it's windy, a windy it's day, always- man, you just mess up the bar. I can't bring my whole burner and all my keg, uh, MacGyver stuff inside my house, my living room. And <laughs> so I do what I can outside. But, you know, oh, you yeah. take you take the steps to kind of uh, minimize the amount of bacteria. Right. Clean brewing. Yeah. yeah. It seems super important at least to just keep everything sterilized. Yeah. Yeah. It's you got to clean that thing because if you don't and it gets you just wasted a bunch of time, dude, just yeah. making a beer that you have to dump down the drain and money yeah <laughs> money too yeah yeah <sighs> so but um yeah once you start playing with bacteria like on purpose that's where the pre- art form comes in no be prepared to oh. buy new equipment because that thing will mess it up like crazy how so uh especially like if you use Brettanomyces, like brett um which is in most sour beers Google that shit. <laughs> what is Brettanomyces? I don't even think we know it's how to yeast. spell that. It's another yeast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Wild. that thing will, once it gets into your equipment, it's almost impossible just to get it out of your equipment. So anything from, you can use it on your hot side, which is like boiling and stuff like that. But you, no one uses Brett for the hot side, right? Like, but um, your cold side stuff, like anything that has to be, that is kept. Pretty much in the fermenter. During ferment, yeah, fermentation. But um, yeah, wineries too, man. Wineries, like I go to wineries and I'm like, what would happen if you f- got some stuff contaminated with Brett? They would just be like, we'll just burn this winery down. Yep. Yeah. That's how bad it is, dude. Like even off if it's on your clothes, yep. people are scared to like just walk Where into a winery. Where does it come from? It's around the air too. There. You can isolate it, but it's in the air. Is just is it in, in certain parts of the nation, or is this something everywhere. that's just everywhere? Everywhere, yeah. We're breathing in it right now. Yeah. So if his stuff gets infected with bread, yeah. So you can literally like go home with bread on on yeah, your clothes, so, like fuck like up your whole shit. Big breweries like New Belgium, what they would do is they have totally different facilities if you're gonna do a clean beer versus a regular beer, yeah. and you don't wear the same clothes, or you wear like like tabbies. Go or, to like a definition, know. dude. Like a wiki, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like a wiki. So the, a lot of the commercial breweries they have a different, uh, a whole different system, and sometimes a different location just for their sour beers. And the workers don't don't go from one to another without having to change their shoes or put on tabbies or change their clothes because they're you know if you if you're gonna make a clean beer and it turns sour, these breweries that are commercial just you'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just because someone walked in with bread in their shirt from the sour factory. What? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. Brettanomyces, Brettanomyces, Brettanomyces is a non-spore forming genus of yeast in the family, Uh, too long to say, and is often colloquially referred to as Brett. Okay, so let's go to the, uh, the yeast is acetogenic and when grown on glucose rich media under aerobic conditions produces large amounts of acetic acid. but Brennanomyces is important to both brewing and wine industries due to sensory compounds it produces. So you want it sometimes then. If you're trying to get like some uh, like sour beer, right? You, that's when you would want it. That's so, the only time you would want it. Probably. So technically you have to really separate when you're when you're brewing a sour beer versus when you're brewing maybe a, clean a, beer. a cleaner beer. Yeah, yeah, you don't... You can't brew them at the same time in the same facility. You know what? There's a brewery called The Brewery. They were, like, the shit at one point, right? Like, they were yeah. just selling a bunch of crazy... Pull it down, bro. They were crazy. They were, like, selling a bunch of crazy, like, 12% beers, 14% beers. And they were doing good, right? They had a membership where it was, like, 300 bucks a year. People will buy them, and they probably had, like, a 1,000 members, right? Um, but once their brewery got infected... Because they would do sour beers here and there, but I don't think they kind of kept everything separate. So a bunch of their stuff got infected. Quality just went downhill. So uh, people are starting to complain. So they're just like, man, we got to figure out how to stop this. <clears throat> oh, things that were already being bought, mm-hmm. people were opening it up and like, it was just infected. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect this type of beer, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, dude, I wanted like a 12, 14% beer that tastes like 
Black Tuesday. I'm not sure, Gerard. Was uh, Black Tuesday infected at one point? They had like, yeah. right? They had like or, uh, white, chocolate white chocolate. Yeah. The yeah. number one also was uh, Bourbon County's. Was it 2016? Yeah. Oh, man, it was. They Good had to silent. recall that. Yep. So anything, and it just fucks everything up, dude. Yeah. So, so the brewery, the, what what they had to do to fix that problem was buy another building and brew but keep all the sour beers at the other facility so they would brew a clean beer put it in a container that they can drive to their <laughs> sour building and then transfer it into whatever they do barrels fermenters and then add the bacteria in there right so everything had to be separate dude. how would wine use it do you know how wine they don't want it <clears throat> no they don't yeah. but okay. there's some wineries that use it i've never tasted a brett wine before a sour wine yeah, yeah. Bunky. Well, Bunky. Yeah, like wet hay, wet grass. Um I just I'm curious to taste it. I wanna taste it, dude, if anything. Just to know. Yeah, did does beer the way beer a the way wine ages, does beer age the same way as or does it have sort of a life a lifespan before if you drink it past this day, then you're kind of Wait. shit out of luck. Beer and wine. Yeah, yeah. You know how yeah. wine like ages. As as wine ages, it sort of tastes better. Tastes better. Is that the same it, way that works for beer? Some it, beers. Yeah, some. It has some? its peak. I think the oh, higher the alcohol, man. The yeah, higher yeah, the yeah. alcohol, the longer it can age, I guess. Right? Or the like the wild beers or sour beers. Those you can age as well. So it's like the more complex beers. I think anything that's hoppy. You got to drink right away. Yep. Okay. Anything so that's like not an IPA. Happy. Yeah, they're volatile, so a lot of the aroma will go away. But like, if you're talking about like Belgian beers, like uh, lambic beers, a lot of them. The, um, one of my bottles, the expiration date's in twenty thirty seven. Oh shit. Yeah. At cellar temperature, but you know it's supposed to. <laughs> it depends on the beer. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> Just so in case something happens. Around sour beers, this is uh, my Oudbroon kettle soured. It's the cheating way of souring. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, it's the oh, safer this way. Is, this is something you brew too? Yeah, this is okay. the safer way to sour. What, what are we drinking here? This is some, This is different. From Treehouse, I think? It's Treehouse. an IPA. Okay. Yeah. So something we brought from the States. I love Just this. Kinda, I love this, how we're right. trying different kinds of stuff. Thank you, guys. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, smell that thing, man. It's like... This was... It's, like, uh, it's, a, it's very light, but it's a... Uh, I'm trying to be a cure. Beer, beer connoisseur here. I'm feeling like relaxed already. This is like my second glass, and we're only pouring like yeah, yeah, a quarter yeah, of the yeah, glass. Yeah. Dude. I, I feel like I'm turning red. I can, warm. I can feel the booziness of my body. See, drink craft beer, and you yeah. don't get bear belly. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to buy like a six pack. You just like <laughs> buy one can and you share it with your boys. I know my shit is going to the movie theaters. Oh. <clears throat> Uh, no movie theaters uh, involved in this. The movie theater at my living room, my, move, my living room theater. No. Yeah, we don't bring any of those shooters in and mix it with our coke in the movies. Those are only for <laughs> or whole cans of beer, <laughs> or whole cans of beer, <laughs> uh, and uh, just uh, you know, get the water cup. Yep. <laughs> Babe, my purse is heavy from all your beer cans. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's, okay. it's only two beers. But the aroma on this thing is like pretty strong, dude. So it's like the person next to you will be like, "What's that, dude? Yeah. Orange yeah. juice, like, dude. <laughs> Orange juice. <laughs> yeah, dude. This thing is good. So this one doesn't have any bread. It's a sour, but there's no funk in it. I only use uh, lactic acid, not bread. So how? So, I mean, this one looks darker from the last one. From the last one that you poured. Yeah. I'm trying. I was are trying. They, to do this. These are these like two different processes. Um, as a sour beer or as a dark beer? As a, I guess. <laughs> to I, guess I guess we cross the roads, right? <laughs> I mean, I I, I could I, I wouldn't if I didn't put any of the lactobacillus, the lactic bacteria or the lactic producing bacteria into it. It would have just been a regular, you know, dark beer. But because I introduced the actual yeast or the actual bacteria into it, it yeah. it uh, soured it out. But I didn't put any bread in it, so there's no funk. It's just so tart. So it's just a. So what kind of what kind of bacteria did you put in it if it wasn't bread? Uh, lactobacillus. Some people use uh, the main ones Lacto, are there. lactobacillus, Britannomyces, and Pediococcus. Those are like the main uh, funky and sour beers. But this is a oud brune. I try to do it more. It's like a, it's a Belgian Flanders style. So it's it's, dark, it's a little more maltier. You get that malty sweetness more than the the bright 
bready hot or uh, bright bready malt so it's a uh, juxtapose wow kettle sour yeah that's good thank you thank you so the thing with kettle sour it's like um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry let me just uh, disrupt you for a second i um i've been really liking sour beers lately yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, i'm that's all good. about it dude that that fruit lens from modern times You're is my about shit, about it. dude i'm like damn that's this is good yeah Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's like um, sour beers. Whenever I hear like kettle sour beers, it's like I'm always looking for like a uh, baby vomit smell. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you get that thing, dude, and it like, freaking stinks, dude. Like cheese Swishing shit. baby vomit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this doesn't have it, dude. This is good. I didn't use the kettle. I used the keg. So I, uh, oh, I kept the oxygen away. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because once oxygen gets into it... So a kettle, you open up... Sorry, dude, I keep disrupting. Kettle is just a pretty much a big pot that you boil your beer in. Okay, and, and, so. and but but you're able... Like you said, it's because air... You're, the keg didn't make get the air to it. The kettle allows air to go into it? Yeah, if you don't seal it up okay. or put like a layer of CO2 just to kind of keep oxygen out. I see, I see. This is what, like three days, two days? Uh, three days. Okay. Yeah, three days. So he kept it like at a certain temperature, right? For like three days? Around uh, 85 to 90, depending on the bacteria. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like head retention on it too, because usually kettle sours, you don't have head, dude. You know, maybe because I I, uh, carved, I I poured it from the keg, so it was uh, forced carved. (laughs) But still, it's good, dude. I really like this. I really like yeah, how you guys are, are geeking out on this beer right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I can talk to somebody on Guam about this shit. Yeah. You know? But kettle sour beers, I mean, I always want kettle in my, I always want sour beers in my taps, but a lot of sour beers take seven to nine months, you know, around that time to make. And sometimes it's going to mess up. Is it because of the yeast or the bacteria? Yeah, a lot of times it's the bacteria. And yeah, it but takes, is this it already long. sitting inside the bottle or is it? Only no. it's done already, right? Yeah, like it's, done, it's done doing its thing. So now you're just like holding it or like packaging it. So pretty much like this kettle sour, I soured it with in the kettle or in my keg, and then I boiled it to kill all the bacteria. And then now it's a regular clean beer, so there's no more uh, uh, bacteria in it. But for standard sours or not standard, but traditional sours, they put it into their fermenter, whether it be a uh, oak barrel or is that why it's pretty clear? Uh, or is this considered clear? Yeah, no? it's yeah, it's pretty, pretty clear. clear. It's pretty yeah. clear. I feel like it's pretty clear. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't plan on making it clear, but I'm glad it did turn out clear. Yeah, <laughs> that's the hard part is to make it nice and clear. Yeah, because usually you would expect a dark beer to have more, more of sort Opaque. of a clout, right? Yeah, can't really see through. Yeah, this is good. It's like, uh, it's not too thin because like a lot of uh, Berliners like this is like pretty watery. Like as like a watery thin taste to it you know right almost like you're drinking water more <laughs> water <sack. laughs> like yeah. a miller light or <laughs> <laughs> not like these uh hazy ipas that you drink now they're kind of like thick Soft. you know right hmm so is this how a beer share goes like yeah, you just sit down and you taste the beers and you sort of just talk about it geek out yeah yeah or like hey how'd you get that beer I had to uh, <laughs> trade uh, an arm and a leg or do unforgivable things for that beer, you know? <laughs> things I don't tell anybody how Never I got it. Everybody ping so. pong and ding dang. <laughs> 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 but I noticed beer shares with uh, drinkers versus brewers is totally different because I feel like if, if we're in a room with other beer drink like non-brewers and we start geeking out, they're like, oh my God, you guys should stop talking about your shit. Why is that? I don't know. It just like it feels like I don't want people to feel like they're not part of the conversation. But we're like, but we want to know, like, dude, how did you do this? What did you do? You know, did you have any problems? And then I don't know. I just don't want people sometimes to be like, oh my god, these guys are just talking about this. Some people are interested in it, nerds. but yeah, fucking nerds. <laughs> how inappropriate! You know, you, no one wants to be in a conversation that they don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like right now. <laughs> so you talk like science and shit. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's great though. Um, <laughs> it's definitely expanding my mind as to as to the possibilities of of what beers are. I mean, think about it, guys. We we grew up the Bud family, Miller family of beers on Guam for for when we were kids to kids. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Hey, 14. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds yeah, about right. Yeah. We were kids to, to adults, and now this sort of craft brew f- craze happens. Uh, I know it's not something that just started in the 2000s. I know craft beer has been around since, like, the 70s, right? And sort of evolved, and there was sort of legislation against it. I don't know. Depends what your <laughs> definition of craft beer is. Because you can, you can drink some 500-year-old recipe from Belgium and to you, it's craft beer, but to them, it's just beer that they've made for like centuries. tradition, right? Tradition, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you just brought it. You just brought to mind a uh, beer fest. You guys ever watch a yeah. beer fest? Where the guys like we're not on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, great grandpa pause pressing yeah. military pressing the fucking keg. Yep. <laughs> as Dude. he's as he's drinking from the keg, he's like ah, and on a treadmill yeah. coming on a bicycle. <laughs> dude, I haven't watched that movie in like forever, dude. Oh, dude. It's such a great movie. I think they're coming. That that group's coming out with uh, with Super Troopers too. Is it oh, already okay, out? Okay, okay. It did come out already. I think so. That's right. Shame on us. God, shame on me. Because <laughs> it came out on it came out in April. Mm. Anyways, like I shoot died. the DVD or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's like that. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like a one like couple weeks inside the theaters, you know. <laughs> Certain theaters. So yeah. Yeah, a, select the play it in select theaters near you. <laughs> Only on base. Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I mean just going back to the whole um you know, beer craze here on Guam, we've we've culture shifted here and I think it's changed a lot. I mean we were in the beginning of this we were talking about kitchen lingo and I I go there and I just want to drink drink the the shit that's not the stuff that we used to drink as right ki- as kids as kids yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> i mean now just sunday you guys had that craft that craft i mean they have the craft festival every year right but this was something sort of different compared to the stuff that they've had in the past right yeah yeah yeah, this one was crazy, man. I was just worried about like how much those ticket prices were gonna be. Like, oh man, is anyone gonna spend like, hundred fifty or hundred twenty five on some tickets, dude? You know, like I it worried me. I was like, man, no one's gonna drink our stuff, dude, if we're like charging that much, right? But uh, when you think about it, it's like the things we had to go through to get these beers here on the island. No one can just go to Monkish, which is like that. I would say like one of the top. 10 would you say top 10 breweries right now that people are trying to get beers from yep. is this is this a west coast beer or yeah they're in torrance so it's a brewery <laughs> okay. in torrance so i think torrance is where the kings the capricios is at anyways they, go ahead <laughs> no, sorry sorry <laughs> so it's like <laughs> right yeah yeah one of the few <laughs> man <laughs> sorry sorry no no it's all right <laughs> So they have it's like the beer, uh, dude. I mean, right? Already, dude. Shit, yeah. Which is why craft beer is so good, dude, because you don't have to drink too much of it to be good. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, dude, Monkish is based out of uh, Torrance, California, and they built such a crazy following on their IPAs where they have to they when they used to announce it, they would announce it a day before or two days before. Like, hey, we're releasing this IPA, we're gonna release it on a Saturday. Um we only have 200 cases or whatever people will drive all the way from shit all the way from san diego right or whatever just to go and line up outside the brewery the day before and they would camp out in line in their parking lot and then like it's an iphone yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like that dude and it was like for beer man like i went one time like i used to freak out and be like damn you guys do that shit but then like i hear so many cool experiences where people are meeting each other in the parking lot sharing beers sharing beers so, <laughs> we're, like, fucking dude. <laughs> yeah dude so my very first experience i went there i were i was in the freaking parking lot like like 4 a.m just hanging out hanging out with a bunch of guys who drink beers but there was this guy dude he was probably in his like 30s he brought his like four month old baby with him oh. and it's like cold dude but dude he he was changing his daughter's diapers on the street <laughs> i'm like wow dude like what people do for beer man, man this guy's down dude and it's like you know it's like for four beers people would pay like 20 25 bucks for it right and then you would only you would only be allowed to buy three of those four packs before now it's only two four packs because there's not so much right there's yeah. not, not enough for everybody so people will keep four trade the other four sell it 
but they would sell it on the secondary market for like 100 bucks for just like the four cans Damn. but so what i was trying to get at so is it's like, like a shoe game it's too. a beer black yeah. market man yeah fuck so what i was trying to get to is like nobody can get kegs from this brewery unless you're throwing like a big beer event you know like you're throwing like the top five beer event in the country right but for some reason like we developed like a good relationship with this guy and like all the other breweries that we got kegs from so we had to spend a lot of money dude because like that one keg they could have made a thousand bucks if they just sold it on their tap room yeah but instead they chose to help us out give it to us help educate guam um they donated it well whatever whatever we had to buy for it for them or from them but we had to bring that to guam whatever the shipping cost is on top of that and try to sell these $150 tickets, $120 tickets for people to drink. And we're not just saying, hey, man, we have, like, this gets you only six pours of beers, you know? Like, shit, drink as um, much as you can. Yeah. <laughs> drink as much as you can. Keep we're, refilling. <laughs> we're not going to run out of beer. We hope you enjoy your your uh, your time, you know? And yeah. we, we flew out a guy from L.A. who's, like, a super experienced DJ battle dj you know like dj Rhett, he came out to help and uh support us too so um, imagine you got like a top world-class la dj coming in playing music for everybody then we're bringing in craft beers that you can't just ask a brewery to buy yeah. so we brought that too and then we also had food that was catered so and we came out with these fancy glasses and the, they the, can the, take off the uh, the ex- exclusivity was there huh yeah yeah so if you think about it, you pay what's a, what's the average ticket for a beer event? Like fifty 50, bucks. 60, yeah. Yeah, and they want to give you like <laughs> six pours. Like here's six tickets. You can oh, have six th- pours. And that's like and the you usual, buy more. Like you have to you, buy more. You go tokens. and drink some Kona's. You go and drink some. Something you can buy at the yeah. store. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like shit. Who wants to do that? That's Mo Craft, right? Yeah. Goose Island IPAs and shit. Yeah. And you still got to buy your own food. Yep. You get a generic glass, probably like plastic cup or something. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but and you get like two ounce pour of shit, dude. Nothing cool, nothing cool out of it, right? Nothing yeah. different except just people and experience. That's it. <laughs> there, there, people were like, uh, no, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, all the way to the top. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's why they have lines. So if you go to the, the ones in the states are stingy right now. We're gonna fill it right to the left. Uh, you know, not like here where they're like, well, they won't fill it all the way up for you, but you get to go back as much as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had to, I always told people at the event, they're like, I don't know, 125, 175 was pretty cheap. I'm like, you know, all the beers that are on the counter at this very second is worth more than what you drank right now is worth more than your ticket. So I had to kind of explain to them that these beers are rare, not and only the, the ones days, in the kegs. And the days you have to possibly spend yeah. to just drink four cans. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. too. Time. <laughs> Especially coming from Guam, it's like, if you wanted to try a monkish beer, like how would you get it because you have nothing really to trade for that beer Mules. people have like other stuff to trade for it right but um here on guam like shit yeah how would you get that unless you want you're willing to spend like 100 bucks and Here's then my, ship it too i give you 50 big waves <laughs> <laughs> it, it costs the same amount <laughs> and i got some different than nancy that you can uh, <laughs> you haven't tried this yet we're bartering <laughs> Here, take my pepper plant and my mango tree. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see that coconut candy Charles uses for a stout? I'll give you that coconut candy. <laughs> dude, people would, right? Dude, this is the one used for a stout, bro. <laughs> dude, people would, bro. Look at it. It's even in a glass case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. This is the exact coconut he was, like, grating and sweating at the same time. Dude, you got to put that guy sweat in that thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dude, like we did a beer like that we sent uh we did coconut candy stout for a brewery in miami and it was exclusive to us we didn't sell it to the public but we released it at this one brewery's uh anniversary jay wakefield we he had like an event um we poured it at the vip booth we didn't sell it but we raffled it so i think they sold how many tickets Twelve thousand. No, no, like how many tickets did they sell? Because they were only able to raffle off like 12 bottles of that beer. So it was uh, a stout, which is 17%, aged in Willet barrels. Or no, not Willet, uh, Antique 107 barrels, which is... Antique Cocoa? Yeah, Antique Cocoa. That's so like 800 bucks it. For the, so, co- for the blue. For the so blue, for yeah. Antique blue. But so we raffled off 12 bottles. How many tickets did they sell at the event? I think like 
thirty thousand. If I'm not mistaken, thirty thousand. They had to run to. How do you sell thirty thousand tickets? How many people were there? What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, people had like <laughs> Wake Fest. Yeah, dude. Oh, nice. So oh they raffled them off. So. Okay, so it's a really, really big event. It's a big event, dude. Okay, okay. And this guy makes like the best outs, and he's one of the top three guys who makes the best outs in uh, the country, right? In the world, then. Yeah, in the world, because I, I I vouch for that shit. But so we did a beer with them, seventeen percent aged in antique Weller one hundred seven. Um, I put coconut candy in there. But we also put two other kinds of coconut. We put young coconut, toasted coconut, and then coconut candy. And um, shit, people bought 30,000 tickets. And then the 12 people that got that bottle, there was one guy who went up to a winner and he's like, hey man, I'll buy that bottle from you. Then the guy's like, dude, a thousand bucks right now. Dude, I whipped out his cash and paid tw- like a thousand bucks for that bottle. Wow. And then another guy put it on like those uh my beer seller where you can buy beers or whatever my beer collectibles yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go 1300 right 1300 dollars, dude one bottle like this size dude oh shit you brewed yeah yeah <clears throat> and you just were like coconut candy <laughs> <laughs> but but uh jeremy from uh guahan grill and nate doyle like they all like did their freaking they they just fucking try to make coconut candy as fast as they can yeah. so that they can fly to Miami just to put it in that what Damn. yeah a week before they bottled it so yeah it's crazy man did it go through the same mixing process as uh as the Faha beer where you're just like really shaking the <laughs> shit up yeah yeah okay yeah because it was just like a last minute thing too um and yeah it's, and it sold for that much 1300 dude and then we did another one called Antique Blue which we put uh vanilla um Toasted Japanese chocolate, the Royce, uh, Royce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then a uh, blue bottle coffee. Uh, yeah, it was Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. We did that. That one sold for 800 bucks, Damn. like for that one bottle. So we're like, fuck, dude, we got to do that shit and make it ourselves already, bro. Like, we need to make that money too, man. You know? Right, right. But now you have so, a know how, pretty much. Yeah. Right. You're well, the recipe holder. You're like the key maker. I don't yeah. want to bust out my stout anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had, some, I had some stouts that I was not proud of, dude. And then also, like, there were stouts that I had that were good for, like, a year. And the second year, it was just, like, it went down. So, the, does that kind of, like, boost your confidence as to what you're able to brew and the possibilities of... A little bit. How you can sell in the United States? A little bit. But um, <clears throat> at the same time, too, it's pressure, you know? Right. Like, a lot of people like that beer. A lot of people that I know tried my stouts. Um, I did it on a homebrew scale, which is... You know, like I'm, I'm very happy for them, but the bigger scale that I did were collaborations with a, a well-known brewery. So it's his name that I'm kind of like riding on. But once they tasted that beer, they were just like, "Holy shit! This Chamorro coconut candy! Like, damn, dude, what is that?" It gave you that credibility. Yeah, yeah. So. Now we started a brand with uh, Jake w- uh, Jay Wickfield. So now we're just like, shit. Now that we're doing our own shit, we got to kind of live up to that, you know? So now people are expecting us to be making beers just as good. Right. So now there's pressure, and I'm just like, fuck, dude. If I don't like it, I'll dump it, you know? Yeah. But that beer that we brought here, that Faha beer, that was my first batch on a bigger scale by myself. So shit, so far I've been happy with it, you know? But, you're, but you have to remember, right? You're... You're sending it to the palate of of people who aren't so familiar with yeah. with how craft is. But it was crazy because I was walking around. And everyone I knew that I was talking to had Faha in their cup. Like the line, they were the only brewery or only booth there that had a pretty much a, a line every time they're gonna. Open. Before they even <clears throat> he even tapped the keg, there's a freaking line of people there. But every time I walked around, everyone was just raving. Hey, did you try the Faha? Did you try the Faha? Yeah. It was a, uh, we, as your guinea pigs, we approve. <laughs> See, I didn't, I didn't get no soy sauce comment. No, no <laughs> soy sauce. It was oh, hey. nice, man. <laughs> Tanak Tag. Uh, <laughs> Tanak Tag was uh, lemon finadini. <laughs> like, damn, what's that Tanak Tag beer? <laughs> you know, I did have a sour that has so much acetic acid, it tastes like pure vinegar. I don't, oh. I got, I, I, you can even stomach it. But I was like, man, maybe if I soak some uh, mango in this and make it like a beer, um, pickled beer, 
because you know there is is the same as uh, acid that's in uh, vinegar. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I soak mango in that acidic, acidic beer, right? Maybe it'll be good. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's I'll almost it like out. pickling. <laughs> it's almost like pickling mango in tuba, though, right? It almost gives when you pick mango, pickle mango in tuba. It's very. Um, I've never tried that, dude. It's I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a big tuba fan, or a pickled mango tuba fan. Have you tried it? Have you guys tried it? Oh, Manakli tuba, the vinegar tuba. Yeah, the, the vinegar. Yeah, the oh. vinegar tuba, dude. It's funky. I don't know. It's <laughs> funky to me. It's really funky. It's like it's apple like, cider. Yeah. It's like fermented with like wild yeast, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So you're just you're tasting it. Like, Whoa. It's like you can feel the pickle mango coming out of your nose, you're like breathing it out, you know? Dude, the acid, dude, hey. Never mind, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Go be at the IPA. The, um, the 7% one. Crowler? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll try one of mine. Cool. Hell I yeah. want to finish up your stash. No, oh, man. <laughs> Bro, I, I made sure I put some aside. No, but dude, this is good, dude. There's none of that off Matt, flavor wanna, that I've been looking you for. You want to try some Thanks. of this? Yeah. It's like, uh, oh, that's man. the thing I always look for. You know what? Okay. It's Ever since bad. I first saw your cans, dude, I, I really like the minimalism that you place on, on your <laughs> This on your is can. really minimalism. I mean, that's, <laughs> really, that's, really, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> this is very, uh, very basic. It's all you need to know, 7.1. <laughs> Like, hey, dude, I don't know if I'm going to get a lot from that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just that, I mean, it's it's so attractive. Yeah. It's actually very pretty. You like know? subtle. Yeah. Not yeah. busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's because, um, yeah, that's the kind of Even style the color, we go for. The, the color tone, too. It's almost. Very soft. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's borderline pastel-like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, um, yeah, we just don't want like an in-your-face design. Very loud. I like right. Subtle, like clean, a big, like big Chamorro chief, like, like on the laddie stove. Wait, wait, we can't talk. Yeah, about I don't know about that. Those are fighting words. Those, those are fighting words. On, we cannot say on laddie stones, man. That's <laughs> wait till we bust out our stouts. It'll probably be like the loud labels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, so we we go for different things. Like for IPAs, you want something very inviting, right? Like yeah, yeah. Attractive, sure. where you're just like, oh, that looks nice. Like, ironically, when I go to a beer shop. The bright, the most colorful ones. I don't really look at. I look at the more clear. I don't know. It's uh, it's funny how that works. I look for the cleaner ones. That one looks good because I can read it. I can actually read the it. cleaner labels. The cleaner labels. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and so we're about to drink another beer. Gosh, if you're looking at this can, this can's, this can's bigger than normal. So yeah, it's like a like a Foster's size, right? So um, since we have like a sour beer in our uh, glass, I'm just gonna pour like a little bit, sure, just so we can rinse off a bit. Sure. If you don't know what Foster's is, she's too young for you, bro. So I just pour like just this much. Whenever I go to bottle okay. share or a beer share, I just kind of change the glass and swirl it with the beer, and I'll just drink it <laughs> instead of dumping it. Okay. But what I'm doing is just rinsing off the sour beer off of it. You know. Same thing with like a like something a super off putting beer like a if you have a style and then you taste like an IPA. Yeah. You want to taste the IPA and the hops. You don't want to taste that dark malt because that's not what you want. You know. It's beer etiquette. Right. So a lot of places like shares they'll have like um, pictures of water that you rinse it out and so you can try the beer for what it is not a whole mix of everything else is there a certain drink. way that you should be drinking it like should you be breathing as you're as you're drinking or is it like I usually how like much to, of the aromas are you trying to take in I like to just smell it first just to be like oh, okay what kind of hops are you using because you know like if anything the brewer put like a bunch of money into the aroma part, you know? Right. So, this is really fun. I, I've never been to a beer. I feel like I'm doing a beer share kind right. of deal, dude. Right. It's This is really cool. Is New Zealand hops? No, no. Oh. This is all American all hops. American. This is, like, not even anything crazy like Citra or, or anything. This is just Centennial and CTZ. <laughs> yeah. It's light, too, huh? Yeah. Wow. It <clears throat> tastes light. It tastes light, but it's percent. 7%. Seven percent. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so the aroma, we just, we put, like, 44 pounds of hops in it you know so in a like a 450 gallon batch we put 44 uh 44 pounds of hops i use a uh, 12 ounce of hop <laughs> <laughs> is it is it <clears throat> is it because of the availability because we talked on our on the last podcast that you know, nah. like the availability of of ingredients for you is your biggest struggle. Well, I try not. I mean, it, 
it's everything's about money too. If you can afford to ha- to buy that amount of hops to ship all the way to Guam, then right. cool. But if not, then but then again, if you want to go to style, you're gonna have to fork out a bit more. If you want to pale ale, you can get away with a couple ounces of hops. But if you want some of that hazy stuff that we're drinking, you need a, you need to put a little bit more than just a couple ounces. Right, right. So and so this is not considered a hazy beer. It's uh, I would say this unfiltered. Like, yeah, you can see you can a little bit of kind grit. of clarity. Yeah. Because I'm not sure, like, trying to go for that hazy stuff uh-huh. because, like, there's too many people saturating the market with it just because that word hazy, people are going to buy it. Yeah. But, like, I like hazy beers. I just don't like to do it on purpose. We're just like, hey, man, like, I'm going to put a bunch of shit in it just to kind of get that haze, you know. Um, I like to go for taste first, if anything, because I've tasted a bunch of hazy beers that tasted like... Vegetable? Yeah, or, like, too... OD, like too much like oatmeal mm-hmm. kind of like t- like bread yeah. <laughs> i don't know like i want to be able to taste the hop flavor i want to taste the malt i want crispiness not too much full body like i like balance dude like to me i feel like this is a hill farmstead type beer dude and i haven't even tried this beer before i left to uh guam so this was still fermenting when i when i came here so um or kegging or carbonating or whatever but how long did it take to get here this uh he freaking put it in the plane with with him dude <laughs> he took like the that was your that was your a, check-in baggage <laughs> <laughs> he took the he brought in like the legal limit of uh, one gallon <laughs> yeah because we never ever bring in more than one gallon of beer and, <laughs> you know it's the law so uh, one gallon you just ship the rest <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah dude I'm proud of this, dude. I tried it over there. Dude, the it tastes fest. it tastes really good. It doesn't um, it doesn't taste like a seven percent percent beer. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't. The hops that I used was just something you can easily find. There's no shortage of the hops. They're probably like eight dollars a pound, um, wholesale cost for brewers. But if I was gonna put something like Galaxy in here, that would be like thirty two dollars a pound. Yeah, dude. And everyone goes for those crazy hops that are like grapefruit citrus i was just like shit let me use some old school hops that used to be cool 10 years ago you know Man. and shit dude. i don't know what you did to treat this but the like that stone fruity is coming out i really like it a lot right yeah stone fruit Kinda do you like say a, stone like fruit? an apricot like a, mango yeah. okay okay and then um mouthfeel is very uh not too overly like carbonated it's like yeah, it's very, it's definitely not too carbonated. It's not. It doesn't make me go. Ah. Right. <laughs> no. It's like very low carb. It's like it's like I know exactly. Dude. I'm literally like breaking out all the layman, <laughs> all the layman shit for you guys. No. Like, just trying to break it down for the understand. listeners. Like, uh, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You start, burp, you start burping and shit. Like, damn. But it does remind you of uh, you know drinking at, at a beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know yeah. what I, I was trying to. F- I've I've always tried to figure out what body meant to to when you're drinking to when you're drinking beer. Yeah. But I, I never really understood it until I started drinking at least with you guys mm-hmm. the, the different styles of beer. I know it hasn't really changed from a from a really light one to a really dark one. But yeah, um, you can sort of tell the difference the way the alcohol hits your mouth as you guys are talking about it. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're. Are you talking about like dryness? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, like very spritzy, right? Like, yeah, and it feels light in my mouth, almost like it's like soft. Like, like, yeah, it's like delicate, delicate, yeah, right? yeah, like yeah, yeah, very delicate. Yeah, like I mean, a white drinking, wine. When you're drinking a stout, it's like it's like, like whoa, that shit's in my mouth. But it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, it's like a white it wine where it's kind of more crispy. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it slowly. So like, our next conversation, I promise you, don't be like, oh yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. <laughs> Man, you did your research for the BJ one, but you didn't do your research for this one. Oh, man, <laughs> I had to do my, my, my research for the BJ I know, one. man. <clears throat> That's a... Yeah, so I interviewed BJ Penn today. Yeah. And uh, holy shit. It, like, shit. happened within hours, and I was like, for real? Like, now? Okay. Yeah. okay we're doing this. this yeah, I just happening. saw him. I just saw him at a coffee slit when I was picking up some... Uh, and I borrowed their kegs, too, for this uh, Faha. But, yeah. yeah, I saw Melker with BJ, and I was like, oh, shit. Let me fucking take a picture and put yeah. my IG. You don't yeah. see that every day. For real, dude. For reals. And apparently this is like his third time here. So I was like, Yeah. 
I didn't even I know. I felt like this is your first time here. Yeah, me too. You know how many people look up to you on this island? Right, right. <laughs> Come to a fiesta. Yeah. yeah. You're like the the guy, the islander. I, I was telling him during the podcast, I said, before <clears throat> before Frank, before John Tuck, before John Deathless Rages, it was BJ Penn. Yeah. For everyone. That's how every single islander connected themselves to to the UFC, to MMA, sort of that that stage, right? Anyways, listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to ruin it for you. No, it's cool, man. I like how he's scrappy, bro, because that just shows, like, it does show, like, how people from the islands scrap. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know? and, and, and a lot of what he had to say, too, is very revealing about, like, the heart of people who come from here. Yeah. You know? And Shit. the heart we still have, dude. Uh, just doing this podcast and meeting all the people that I'm meeting, uh, there is there's some serious heart going on here as far as believing in each other whether you're abroad or on island the fact that we can make it right not yep. just as chamorros but but from yeah, but as us. people <laughs> that can yeah yeah right you guys are in two different lands yeah. but now you guys can you guys can communicate on this sort of language yeah i always ask this guy hey man i have a problem with this <laughs> need some help i was the same way man that's the only way you can get better too yeah if you can't figure it out, find someone who can, you know? How did how did you guys sort of link up and cross paths in your, I guess, in the beer the beer world? I don't remember. I think first it was probably like uh, Instagram, right? Yeah, probably Instagram. And then from there, I came out last year for a beer event, oh, like a small beer event. What and it was is that you needed to borrow the, <laughs> the like inline. A, and <laughs> I knew you homebrewed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how we met. And then uh, he tried some of my beers. But so. this is the, his first time trying my beers, though. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you selling by then? No, no. I was just, like, making it still homebrew style. But, you know, like, I did collabs here and there. So, but um, whatever I brought here to Guam was still kind of, like, homebrew. So nothing bigger than 30 gallons that I would make at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, I'm like, I make five <laughs> gallons. <laughs> the size 30. of room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all the boys will drink that thing up, dude. You know. Yeah, I bet people taking home. They have their secret growlers. Like, hey, where's Charles? I'm like, man, I'm supposed to be selling beer. <laughs> 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 now we're just sharing beers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when did when did you know you were ready to? I I know I asked that earlier. You know, like when did you? I mean, when you came here, when you guys met, there wasn't. You weren't. You weren't already selling, but you were collabing with people to the point where. Yeah, now you have the confidence that, yeah, you can brew beer, but still not sell. Yeah, because, man, the whole process is crazy. Like, you need licenses, right? So in order for you to apply for a license, you need a building, like a, like a building to base it off of. So And it can't just be your home address, P.O. No, box. <laughs> no, it has to be like where you're going to store and sell the beers out of, right? Or And make it, too. So we... Man, I think this was like a whole two-year process, dude. Where we're looking in Orange County, couldn't find anything available, right? Like we found a spot, and they're just like, "Hey, you guys gonna do a brewery? Okay, we need a hundred thousand dollars in deposit before you can sign your lease, right?" And we're looking for buildings that are like a dollar a square foot because we're looking for six thousand square feet, you know. But it's just it's crazy out there. Like no one wants a brewery. Like, all these landlords, they don't want a brewery to be there, right? Because they can lease out to offices where they don't need to do construction. It's just easy. They're just, like, desks, tables, internet, and that's it. And right. But for us, we got to, like, break down the floors, get all these coatings and all that. And it's just a headache for the landlords. And if they're just, like, what if you guys don't make it? What if you guys go out of business before your lease ends? So they're just, like, hey, man, we need a $100,000 deposit. But, um... So that's quite the insurance there, right? <laughs> so we finally found a, a place that's in first LA. Month's rent. Yeah, so we finally <laughs> found a place in LA that was already open, but they didn't want to deal with the beer anymore. They're just like, hey, we don't want to do this brewery thing because mm. there's all these breweries popping up all over the place, and anyone thinks they can just do it. Yeah, you know. So um, I got a lot riding on this, and I think my beers are going to hold customers and want people to drink my beers 
and if not then so now you're fuck, in a, a you're a lot in a, of money. you're in a brick and mortar now yeah yeah so now we do have a place to make beers out of we're kind of like sharing a spot we're kind of writing on their license while we're applying for ours because it takes about six months to get approved so we're just like hey let us use your license we'll do a dba under our name just so we can start making and selling beers already right so that's what we're doing selling some beers making it and the first thing we wanted to do is with our first beers we wanted to make sure guam had some good beers to kind of drink you know because you know like i come to guam often there's nothing good to drink here right or there is but there could be better well as a connoisseur yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm not a snob or anything. Shit, I'll still drink Heineken's, you know. Right, right, right. Like, but when I want something better, I want something better. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just sent it to the boys first, you know, make sure we take care of our own people. Um, we have a lot of friends and family here too, and they, it's not so easy for them to get it. So the best thing we could do is <clears throat> send it to them, since there's a lot of good beers in California to drink already they can wait a little bit before we start making our own or like selling where we're at you know right so <clears throat> so the main market is to to hit to hit here first before yeah to s- sort of bring up the palette yeah yeah so we want to kind of make sure everybody's educated over here yeah because like hey man get ready because we're gonna start sending you some like cooler shit you know so um and you know like develop everyone's palettes here say you know like it's hey, important it's important i mean yeah. i mean just as just as the british <clears throat> the british had to so before they introduced bob marley to the united states so bob marley went from jamaica to england and then england had the rock and roll sound the 50s rock and roll sound from the beatles and stuff like that but before they brought it to the united states they had to get the palette of the united states they had to get Bob Marley's music to the palate of the United States, and that was um, that was that was American rock and roll. So in the Legend album, they actually put in American rock and roll licks into the album, so that when they heard was Bob familiar. Marley, it was already a familiar sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing like too different, right? right. But it kind of works out though, because the beer, the craft beer phase has been. Or craze has been happening here on Guam. People are drinking more craft now. Now you guys, the palate's sort of been introduced. Yeah. Now the easy part. I was about to say in, that because right? from living here, at, at least with the people that I drink with, they already they already have the palate. Whether it be beer geeks or uh, just the regular guys who like to drink Heineken, they're right. already used to the craft beer palate because of what the 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 guys bring out of what they can buy at foodies, pretty much. So they were already introduced. So. Charles didn't really need to do that because people already knew what the beers were. They already knew what to expect. Like, oh, this is IPA. You know, if you ask someone 10 years ago, oh, this is IPA, they're like, what the hell is yeah. this? But, you know, all, yeah, all the, ch- the Chelus and Prims, is they're like, like a, oh, I know this is IPA. Yeah, it's solid. Is that like a butt ice? Yeah. <laughs> right. Natural ice. Natural ice. <laughs> Perfect timing, though, man. Perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like, shit, we still got to make beers that are not super over the top, right? Cause yeah. I hear like still 12% stouts are still kind of crazy, yeah. you know, for people's palates because they're so used to drinking something light. So we made something like Chasing Sunset, right, which is like a session session ale, like session beer, which is like 45 to 5%. Not sure what the ABV is, but I know it's something low like that. But that's something we made to kind of reach out to the, like the Budweiser drinkers and lagers, like Miller, Budweiser. Right, right. But, um... Nothing bitter, something that's easy to drink, very bright and spritzy and very carbonated, right? Because they like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I can barbecue and roast this pig for... for <laughs> Dude, this beer doesn't get warm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets better. <laughs> but they don't have a koozie for that big can, bro. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Yeah, dude. So, yeah, that's crazy, man. It's so, hard to please everyone, though. It is. You know, it know. is, dude. And I think I think that's with every craft here on Guam. You know, whether it comes to music, this fucking podcast. Yeah. You know, um, digital media. You can't. You can't. You can't please make everybody, everybody happy. Right? Yeah, dude. And um, I think, I think though that the mindset is changing, right? The culture shift. Culture shift and literally 
everything. Yeah. Everything. And people are freaking out. Like, oh, my God, we're losing our culture. But no, we're not. We're in the new culture now. Yeah, the old culture and everything and everything that was in the past, it, it, it transferred, but it didn't stay the same. Because yeah. listen to the music now. You know? Look at the art you see now. You're not only seeing Laddie Stones and coconut trees and landscapes. Dude, you're seeing intricate art. You're seeing abstract. You're yeah. seeing a lot of different kinds of stuff. And then and, and that'll that'll go straight towards beer. Right? Yep. Yeah. So it's a cultural shift. People will end up drinking it. It'll be on a smaller scale because what Guam is 160. 160 large, but people come and go, people come and go, people come and go. People go to the States, people come back. We're always gonna get that transfer of knowledge coming back into here. Mm -hmm. right? You know, I watched this documentary about, at least in California, the breweries out there, is, it said there is a bubble that's, that's growing, and will the bubble pop as far as craft beer, craft, craft beer scene, at least? They were talking about California because that's what the documentary was about. Do they think it's growing too large? I think it's growing too large. Hmm. I think so. I think there's just way too many people think they can make money off of their home brews, mm -hmm. but nothing... They're not executing anything like more than mundane, you know, something mediocre. All they're releasing is something mediocre, like, oh, this is a beer that I learned how to make, and it's just very basic and typical, you know? <clears throat> Instructional beer. Yeah, and maybe, like, they'll be cool. They'll Maybe they'll keep the lights on because I don't see a lot of craft breweries going out of business. So they're they're sustaining they're probably sustaining by like their local culture right mm -hmm. so i think that's all it is now there's like a lot of breweries popping up all over the place and the only ones that are keeping the lights on there is just the quality the quali yeah, you know yeah. Like, yeah like it's just a easy to drink or like something that it's not terrible but it's enough to keep the locals coming and drinking their shit you wow. know but if you want to be like crazy and blow up and you just got to do something different you know right whether it's marketing or yeah maybe even just not kind even, of beer yeah or just make something that's gonna freaking get people like chronic for your shit <laughs> you know <laughs> A following really helps <clears throat> like hey, let me steal my dad's rolex and trade for that beer <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people have <laughs> the whales part. Dude, They're trade. so good. It makes you think it's crack. I'll dude. trade you my land for that. <laughs> no. <dude. laughs> I'm like, dude, I got a case, bro. What was your land? <laughs> yeah, you're definitely, I mean, dude, you guys are definitely bringing in the new culture, right? I mean, with with you being a local brewer, but, but being from the States, I mean, living out in the States, and then you being a, a homegrown brewer, trying to trying to figure out the ropes and trying to actually be in a niche space right because it's an it's a niche it's a niche space but it's yeah cause not really what, because it's well not, there is non-existent right uh well there's nothing there's nothing stopping from some some people with money especially on guam to bring in people with money on guam to bring in a brewer from the states who who's you know, veteran brewer. I have the money. I have the brewer. I have the space. That's open up a brewery on Guam. Yeah. You know, and that that might come about in the next year or two. You know. But do you think that's something that would help you? Um. Well, I'm always I'm I'm trying to stay positive and be like, okay, yeah, solid. There's solid. There's good beer in Guam. Thank God, because everyone needs good beer. You know what right, I mean? But right. I'm, now it's it's making me think about how I'm gonna differentiate myself from from them. You know, like. They, they got the money, they got the equipment, they got the know-how, they got the brewers, they got everything to just blow up. But that's where the people who are trying to come up, that's our difficulty, that's the problem we're having is like, how are we gonna compete against these big guys? And I'm sure Charles has the same problem or same issue in the States, you know? How yeah, are because now you're, you're a fish in a big pond <laughs> yeah. with many fish, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And, scary, and that's the problem, it's a pond, right? Yeah, but you know what, like, the thing about California, California, there's not a lot of breweries making like crazy shit, you know? Yeah. Like they're just making beers to sell and they're just making 
like very basic beers that are just like okay this will sell it's this not will fucking sell. coconut candy right sell, right i mean like there's no one that's gonna do anything different i think there's they spent so much money into their equipment they're just like invested is like that, crazy is that sort of the advantage that you see like going into it being in such a big pond uh yeah, only because we're we're renting out a spot right now while we're still looking for our own perfect location. Um, but what we want to do is stop waiting and make beers already, you know, just because. Shit, I think we're we've been shopping around for a location like two years already. Hmm. But all these breweries that are popping up, like they got investors. Shit, they got like guys who are spending like a million bucks to get that place with equipment and everything, you know. And we're just like, man, I don't know if I'm willing to lose a million dollars, dude. Like, if we don't do too well, you know? So, um. Yeah, that would be a shitty situation. Yeah, to be and especially with all these breweries <laughs> popping up now. It's like, like, I'm tasting these new breweries. I'm just like, man, their beer tastes like shit. Or it just tastes like everybody else. More I'm of like, the same. Yeah. yeah. Just a different label. A different yeah. bottle. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, dang, dude. Like, wait till. I wish everybody else can try the beers that I make, you know? Just because I've got so much good reviews, I got some confidence in my beers, and I know it'll do well. So it's like I need to hurry up and get it out there. Dude. Are you are you trying are you trying to go global? You know, uh, not yet. Like it's gonna be hard to do that with without like a bunch of money. But first, thing we want to take care of locals first. Locals first. <laughs> locals first, and California locals. You know, just right. because. Uh, you know, they've been supporting me from, like, shit, day one since, like, the first boys tried our shit, you know? And, um, and then we started sending a bunch of beers to our boys here. And they're just like, dang, what is that shit? And it's like, hey, it's home brews that I'm working on. You gotta get it out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, just something I'm doing to sign no big right. Last minute, last minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey. It's a last minute brew, bro. So what's yeah. this one? So... This beer that I just opened right now, it's a double IPA. Mm. It's like a more maltier. This one I use like the the crazy hops that everyone's looking for, right? More body the cheater hops. More, yeah, <laughs> cheater hops, dude, for sure. It's like a mosaic, citra, and simcoe. But they're so good still. But this is yeah. like a eight eight and a half percent beer. Oh, God, no, I'm, only, I'm only drinking a quarter glass of these things and already feeling eight and a half mosaic right now. Mosaic and simcoe are one of my favorite. <laughs> So this is like wow. cow. So someone the, order Vons, please, <laughs> <laughs> bro. This is, bring some fried chicken this is here. Bro, it. I'm hungry. So this is based off of uh, wow. oh my god, Jungle Juice. So we okay. sent a beer called Jungle Juice. Right, right, right. I'm familiar. I drank it and I was like, oh my gosh, this has wow. this is a this is a very thick IPA. Cause I I'm I'm uh, I drink I've drink I've drink I've drink I've drank. IPAs, but oh my God. you know it's uh, it was very different for me when I first tried it. It was almost like the Catch a Fire album when I first heard it. I was like, "Whoa, what is this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's what this is to me okay, right okay, now. Okay. Like, oh my god. Yeah, dude. So I don't know how you treat your hops, man. But even the last one and this one, I'm like, man, I brewed with this, but I have not come out with this aroma and taste. Like, yeah, it's like wow. So this is uh, I don't, okay. I don't even know if we have a name for this yet. <laughs> well, what is it? Is it like uh, F F Figo? Is it Figo? Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I, because I left, and I think this is right when it was done, mm. and I'm not my cre I don't have that creative side of coming up with names and stuff, right? So we got to get a bunch of boys to just come up with stuff. Mm. But Gerard, you came up with that. I think Bear did. Oh yeah, okay. Figo, Figo. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Wow. I'm proud of this. Is like based off of Jungle Juice. But I kind of tweaked it a little bit just to kind of, like, you know, just kind of change it up. Because I think Jungle Juice was a little bit more bitter to me. So, I was like, like, it's good. This is definitely different from the Jungle Juice. Yeah. This one's less bitter. Yeah. More sweet. Proud of it. The aroma is still there. God, the aroma is the same. This is really good. How red am I right now? Jeez. <laughs> And then like, <laughs> you got that Asian glow. I got that Asian glow going on right now, dude. This, these beers are really good. Fuck. Yeah, and see, like, look at that color, dude. Like, it holds the. the <clears throat> yeah, put it light, in the light. Put it on me, yeah. uh, Matt. It holds the light pretty yeah. well. It look holds that. that. Shit, hell yeah. Oh, put it on them. Put it on them. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> ah, shit, my face just ruins this thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I got the it face for my, radio. It was, it was definitely my face. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. <laughs> he said have, have, have a face, face for radio. radio. <laughs> this is really good. But yeah, man, it's like uh, it's not it's not super hazy. It's not like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just very faint, you know. Like I, cause I, I'm not trying to chase the haze, the haze chaser. You know, yeah, this yeah, is just yeah. more like balance. I'm looking for balance, and for eight and a half percent, this doesn't have that boozy, boozy. taste. It doesn't, dude. No. It doesn't. It, it. I was expecting it to be heavier. It's a creeper. Yeah, Try it out, because G. definitely the jungle juice is very heavy compared mm. to this. Yeah. This thing is dangerous, dude. <laughs> you drink it, you're like free. Dude, these these are really good, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for being the percentage that they are, you know, it's very interesting. Yeah, hopefully we can get a con like a co consistent flow of beer supply coming out here, you know? Because, shit, last thing we need is like a bunch of locals from California to try to be like, Hey, dude, why don't you just freaking sell it to us first? We would definitely make more money if we sold it to, like, the locals in L.A. first. But, you know, we don't want everyone fiending for beer here, too. Yeah, <laughs> people do fiend here for beer. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> more than we'd like them to. <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely, I mean, really good, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, dude. I, f I feel like all the beers we drank tonight was right. Yeah, yeah dude. Gosh. I'm glad we had a sour because I was kind of getting just a couple tired. hours ago. See, I still get. Uh, sorry, the pictures loading. Did you have some of this, man? I still get yeah. pictures of people freaking posting out like, "Look what I'm drinking." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool, uh, man. Up to now, man. And my random chats like, "Oh, yeah, I got my. I got. Did you see this at, at uh, Foodies or whatever?" And they're just like raving about it, man. I mean, it drives me, dude. You know, like every time I uh, get like good feedback from it, like it. It just pushes me to do more, you know, like, because I'm only going to keep drink, uh, making beer if you guys continue to drink it, you know. Shit, if I'm only making it for myself, shit, I'll just go somewhere else and buy it because <laughs> it's a lot cheaper just to buy beer than make beer, you know. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> no, at least, at, least cra at least good craft beer because like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's so hard to get besides what we can have on, uh, have on island. People have meals. If, are you going off island? Can you bring me back beer? Oh, that's the number one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so many people are like, hey, you're going off island for a week. Dude, can you bring me back beer? <laughs> yeah, I think I think the so closest thing beer. we have to a brewery right now is the one in Saipan, right? I've yeah. seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, Saipan Brewing. Yeah. I haven't tried their yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've never though, tried any of their stuff yet. They're, um, I wonder how they're, um, how they're doing. Like, I know they're still in business, but like, like, it's just Guam is so expensive to make stuff, right? Like to do stuff. Cause, to do anything. Yeah. So imagine sending grains to Saipan. How much do they make after making the beer? Right. So. But I think their custom laws are a little bit different. I don't, I don't know the, the. I think they get it from like. China. Direct. They can uh, just get it direct. Either direct or I think they have a third party in, in uh, China. That's oh. Because, you know. Their their borders are more open than ours, so they can get stuff from Japan and China. Right, 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 right. Shit. Does that mean less lesser quality? No, no. It's just not problem. necessarily. Yeah, no. I think it's like maybe we should, I don't know anyone in this in California or in the states that would buy Chinese grain. Right. <laughs> I don't know how well that shit would do. <laughs> I'm curious to try it out, and if it's good, shit, open up one here. Yeah, and, uh, and go but on. but but more more. Um, how do you say that during the shipping process of bad bacteria getting into your? Uh, if it's just grain, it's okay because okay. it, it, it'll it, boil out. Yeah, it, it, it naturally has bacteria. You can make sour beer by throwing a handful of grain into some post-boil beer or yeah. uh, wort. Hmm. That's what I used to do before I started buying bacteria in the in the vial in the tube. I used to just throw about half a pound of crushed grain or uncrushed grain and just throw it into the kettle and let it sour but there's so much risk because there's a Might. couple yeah there's, there's a smell like baby diaper dude there's right? a lot of times it's <laughs> like that some baby vomit dude yeah, yeah. it's like oh, I'll play it safe and just order from a commercial uh, lab it's like your hands are all over it like yeah. dude is, is your ease to uh, ease is your ease to god this beer is getting to me it's ease to ease <laughs> <laughs> check it, check it. Yeah, yeah, check, check, mic check, one, two. Uh, is, is it easy for you to, to get product or ingredients? Yeah, yeah, in California, because uh, 
So I'm in, um, so we're based out of LA. The suppliers are in Oceanside, which is just like an hour and a half away. Damn. Yeah. Hour. Fuck. Right. Yeah. yeah hour, about an hour. Uh, what are you dealing with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no distributor. <laughs> yeah. Like so three weeks, three yeah. weeks in the mail. Uh, no, maybe like a week and a half, but then again, for 50 pounds of grain, that's like $106 shipping. Damn. Unless, I know if I was a home brewer in the States, you could just go to your home brew shop and spend zero money on shipping. <laughs> right. So. And uh, $3 on gas. And $3 on gas, yeah, pretty much. That's why, I mean, I mean, it sucks because people in Guam don't want to spend as much money as, the, as I would want to charge just for not even like work. Just if I were to charge them from what shipping and ingredients cost. It would be an arm and a leg. Yeah, a craft beer made here on Guam would definitely be more, more expensive. expensive. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. check sure. this. Like, would you, how much would you pay for this, like a full pint of this? Would you pay like 10 bucks for it, knowing that it's 8.5%? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you wouldn't even need more than a glass and a half or no, something. You wouldn't. To no. feel good, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean we've, we've had four of these quarter glasses right <laughs> and you know what like dude this I, feel, is, I feel way better than i thought i was gonna feel oh. it's expensive to make this beer because i put like 66 pounds of hops. cheater hops oh, like 66 pounds of cheater Jesus. hops which is like 15 bucks a Even pound the taste is good damn and look dude it's kind of warm dude and it tastes freaking good like yeah. there's no more there's no like sweat coming out of it it like, actually tastes good warm yeah it does wow. so that's the thing with craft beer too, man. Like you drink a lager, you have to drink that thing before it gets warm, you know, um, it, because it'll get flat. It'll taste watery, like warm, dirty water. Yeah, it's like, but, uh, <laughs> like something you just don't want to drink. Hey, right? hey, hey. It's like putting your mouth under the the rain gutter <laughs> <laughs> on a warm, hey. hot day. <laughs> so I, you, I have a question, though. Are, are you going to... Sorry, are you gonna stay with your mon- your barrel uh, brew house? Fifteen. Gonna- yeah. We do fifteen barrels, which is like uh, four hundred fifty gallons. Yeah. That's a lot of. You're gonna beer, stay with dude. that. Yeah. Right and yeah. you 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 get rid of all of that before you no. have to. Well, we haven't announced our brewery yet. Okay. Like, um, we're we're gonna do a soft opening when I get back. So we're that's when we're planning. We're planning it sometime in August in El Segundo, which is where our brewery is at. But. Master Random Exclusive Exclusive <laughs> yeah, I always so, do that Sorry <laughs> But Yeah So we We basically just Started putting beers on tap But we Haven't announced Where we're located at mm-hmm. So people are kind of be, Kind of like Man this is like The most ex- Like Confusing brewery Out there And then like They're like Yeah man Like I looked up Their business license They're, they're located out of like Signal Hill But then when you Look it up again It's like based out of Los Alamitos, so there's like, where yeah. the fuck is this brewery? Yeah, it's like your IP address is pinging everywhere, <laughs> like in the, <laughs> the, 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 the James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, uh, <laughs> dude, and then, um, they're just like, they're releasing cans, but how come we don't get any? How come? Where do we find this? And how come people are posting pictures all over the place? And it's just like all the boys posting pictures, you know? But um, damn, yeah, I, you might have to do a speakeasy. Yeah. You know what? The place that we're at is a speakeasy, dude, because uh, they do distillery too. They do, um, they distill vodka, um, whiskey, all that shit. Your shared space? Yeah, oh. so we're a co op. Um, it's crazy because they got like burlesque girls that dance there too. No way. But yeah, that's the crazy thing. It's like when you go into the tasting room, you would never think a brewery called Three Chiefs is there, you know? Right. So, well, that, that's why we haven't announced it because we, and we also don't have enough beers to, Fill the taps. Yeah, yeah. We, we can fill the taps. Well, well, we have like four or five or six beers on tap, but we want to make sure everything is like solid, you know, like 100% happy with it. Um, and most of the beers that we made, <laughs> we sent to Guam. So on behalf of the people of Guam, we thank you for thinking about exactly. us. Exactly. <laughs> thank you guys for <laughs> trying out our stuff. Very hard to find. <laughs> Until recently, because I know Foodies has it now, but when it first got released on Guam and everyone was taking pictures, everyone was like, where can we find this beer? I was only oh finding God, it at can't. Kitchen Lingo at that point. I was point. only finding it on WhatsApp <laughs> back then. I was like, where's the beer at? Man? I know. I don't even have beers for myself, like Stash, dude. So I went to, um, what is that, Shell right here in Aganya, dude. 
foodies, bro. And like, you buy your own beer? I bought my own beer. <laughs> you buy your own beer? <laughs> yeah, I have to support, right? I have to support. I got to support myself. <laughs> oh, that's a good if one. If mom's not going to buy it, no one's going to hey, buy it Hey, bro, it's me, like dude. a politician. A politician that don't vote for herself. <laughs> if, I, if I wouldn't buy it for myself, then no one's going to buy my beer. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Like, why would I not buy my own beer? Hey, I bought the light one, too, because... I was driving. <laughs> are they selling it in these cans? Because I would like to buy it in these cans. These cans are. Will you be legit. selling the crawlers on Guam, or is it only just the? No, we'll be doing. I what think, are, wait, wait. What are these called? Crawlers. Crawlers. Yeah. Okay. So they're like glass crawlers, but instead they're in cans. But I think I don't know the hundred percent like info on it, but I know Foodies got some crawler machines because I think they are going to start um, doing crawler fills. So I know they mentioned. Um, they wanted us to start sending them um, kegs of beers because they want to do what some a more game like changer, that. dude! You go to the gas station to fill up I'm your fill fucking up beer. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> game changer, bro. Yeah, you know, and these are gonna be like exclusive beers that we're gonna like sell. We're not gonna be like, oh, here's Chasing Sunset, and you can fill a crowd because you can get those in cans already. But I don't think we're gonna can beers like this because they're very expensive to make. So. We'll, but we'll definitely sell. We better keep this in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold it for next week. What? Wait, let me put it in huh? a vial. What? I'm just swishing it. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people on Guam were kind of curious because I know Mermaids does growler fills, or they used to when they were open. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what they're kind of confused about the legality about open open container. Because I mean, you can be sipping your growls and growlers and close it, and then what? What would GPD say? You know, like, right. oh, it's open container, but no, it's been closed. But like, I don't know. You could have been sipping from it. You know, some people are, might be more reluctant. I guess the laws need to be more uh, open, uh, as well, updated, updated at least as far as what we were allowed to carry in the car. Because yeah, I go to my, it, you know, I'm innocent drinker and go to my car, uh, go to the gas station and fill up my crawler, go home, my growler and go home, and I'm cherry, you know. But along the way, GPD pulls you over and say, okay, I have an open container because it's not in a sealed bottle cap or whatever. I mean, I don't know how people will be more reluctant more reluctant so i guess th- you would have the laws more uh, updated and um publicized so people won't be afraid to be like oh no that's open container yeah you know i guess that's one of the things that uh people have been asking me too well i guess it's almost like having a an empty beer can in the back of your truck it's right still open container. yeah it's yeah. like yeah. this open container like no nah, that shit's been in back of the truck for like a week so yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> trash in my, my truck i didn't even drink i don't even like that beer what are you talking about <laughs> you drink that? someone threw that back there <laughs> like, dude, i don't check that shit every day <laughs> You'd be surprised I own a truck, dude. Yeah, There's yeah. so many people that yeah. throw their trash in the back of my truck. You know where I work? Is that considered littering or no? <laughs> you should charge them. That's his problem. <laughs> hey, uh, public trash. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the same the same idea, right? The same concept of an open container. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it was like those glass ones because those are recapable. Yeah. And I think people seal it in the States. They just kind of black tape it. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> what is like, shit, just put black tape. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I, actually, black tape. <laughs> I actually know people here who bring their growlers from here to the States so that they can go. Really? Yeah. Go and refill their beer and, oh, bring, it back. Yeah, and then yeah, bring it yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was asking, I, I ran into a friend on the plane. I was like, what are you holding there? He's like, my growler. I was like, what the? Nerd. <laughs> was yeah, like, was yeah. it with two, it's two fucking, hands? Yeah, I was like, it's empty. <laughs> Fill some water when you get thirsty. <laughs> yeah, at least Masaya, dude. <laughs> but then he says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go fill it up. You know, come back and have beer to myself." Nice. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy, man. See, we want to be able to have some uh, <clears throat> beers people can trade from out here too. So yeah, but I, 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 it's cool because the way the way you're you're planning on doing it, you're you're changing the whole. Um tap room thing right you're putting the tap room available into into a gas station now yeah yeah something that's it's not really seen yeah, yeah. not so. really seen in in the states at all right yeah yeah foodies is uh really changing it man they're carrying a bunch of cool beers there you know they got some water times and pizza port <laughs> and you can just walk in there at whatever late hours of the day you know yeah um now it'll be even cooler because now we're gonna Start sending some kegs over there where shit can't get fresher than that, you know. Um, yeah, it's Bill Ada who uh, who runs a 
who no, runs no the, <laughs> 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 Nah, he's he's the mastermind behind the whole um, uh, foodies and Dude. and changing up the whole gas station experience, right? Because yeah. in the states, when you go to gas station, the gas station when you're in the middle of nowhere and it's like super far, you're you're really gonna just buy the hot have, dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna have all the food. It's yeah. gonna have the souvenirs, everything in one. But yeah. He wanted to bring he wanted to bring sort of a store to the gas station that really changed yeah. it up. You want hot food? You want cold food? You want super badass beer? Change yep. the game for sure, and it's everywhere. It's you everywhere, know? dude. And it's nice when you walk in there, dude. You know, it's not it's like everywhere that. above Chalampago. <laughs> you can, sorry for the down south crews. <laughs> you can't really get it down there, but you know, it's Guam. Well, there's only one shell, right? Down there, Marizo shell. Yeah, unless they turn that to a foodies, then I think that's gonna sell pretty good too. Dude. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. all the people in Marito are trying to yeah. get what beer. If you, it's like what, if only, what if you only make <laughs> yeah. your beers available in Marito? Right. And people have to drive right. down to Marito to get those beers. I think people will fucking drive down, dude. Just remind you that over the, there. the gas is four four dollars and uh, twenty some cents. <laughs> Just <to> remind you. <laughs> I drive a V six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keep some up in Central. Well, if you have the leaf. <laughs> And then you're good. <laughs> true, true, true. Or just tell your cousins, bro, I'll trade you a cigarette for that. I uh, <laughs> want beer. Man. Hey, can you just fill it up and uh, drive it up? I'll buy you cheap cigarettes up here. <laughs> I'll get you a fuck shirt. Man, how long have we been going here, dude? I feel like we've been uh, going pretty pretty good here. Hey, G. Pass me the, my phone, if you can. <laughs> Hour. Hour 50. <laughs> Hour 50. What are we capping in at, that too? Oh, my gosh. I don't know, dude. I, I thought I thought we were still at an hour 30. All right. <laughs> it's up to you, man. I'm we can cap it, it off whenever. No, nah, dude. Uh, part two series. No, nah, dude. Uh, this is this is really good. I feel like I feel like you guys educated me a lot as far as tasting beers and how how beer shares are supposed to go, right? Because that's sort of its sort of subculture too, right? Yeah. You have the culture of craft beer, and then you have the subculture of everybody getting together mm -hmm. to share the the beers that they collected over over time right so how does how does that work how does is that something that's common here on guam or yeah, definitely. people do there's so much different circles of uh people who do beer shares i mean it, they can get it from all around the world and be like oh i got this i got that let's go share let's go share and so a lot of them are just small tight-knit groups of people sometimes we'll share together but most of them are just like a few maybe no more than a dozen people and everyone just gets whatever beers they have and we'll go for a share right you know, watch the fifa game or just to share just to share my brother comes over and we share beer just me and him every other night you know it, it, it's just the, the fact that you want to drink beer good really good beer whenever you um with other people and talk about it pretty much yeah not even that much beer yeah not even that much beer and that's the thing it's hard to get beers over here you know yeah um and shit, we just want to fill that void because there's people that do want to drink the beers that these guys are importing over here. And like, you're just freaking out. Like, how the hell did they get that shit? You know? Yeah. Um, but we just want to be able to be like, hey, man, like we want to make it easier for everybody here to get something. Um, that's good. That's right. Good to drink. Now, I want to say I, I was going to say quality, right? Yeah. Uh, that might be offensive. Eh, uh, continue quality. Should Let's I, just say quality. <laughs> we don't probably. care about offenses. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I mean, you're totally right, dude. I, I think, I think the mindset would need to necessarily change in order for people to drink more of these beers to understand, like, all right, you don't need a 12 pack of Heinekens or a 12 pack of Budweisers or a 12 pack of Millers. Uh, to to get drunk, right, or or have a good time, you can literally have two beers, yeah, and still be good, and not worry about the the beer belly or whatever it may be, right? Yeah. Um. Yes. What is that? What are we looking at? <laughs> Forget <laughs> out the color in that. Both one. of you guys got excited as the beer showed up. So this is a beer from Miami, uh, Jay Wakefield. So this is the guy who I did a collaboration okay, with, right, the right. Anti Coco. This guy's known for Berliners and Stouts. So this is a Berliner. So it's a sour kettle beer, just like what um, um, the uh, really good Antigua beer made. That, uh, Johnny made here. Antigu, Antigu Brewing. Yeah. So it's like uh, same thing, sour kettle, but um, 
This is Berliner, 6%. You said Berliner Weiser. Weiser. Yeah. Weiser. Berliner. Weiser. So the beer is called Haterade. It's like a fruit punch inspired Berliner oh. Weiser. I tried this thing in Miami when we were there, and it's, it's delicious, dude. And uh, I freaked out that I made it all the way here. And, uh, I bought a case of this. 100, 100, 125. A case? For a case. 24 times. What? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So don't be surprised if you wanted a case here on Guam and then you spend like over 100 bucks. Yeah, I saw a case of Modern Times is about 76 bucks over at Foodies. <laughs> dude. <clears throat> so what you pay is what we pay too, dude, yeah, in the yeah. States, dude. But that's good, though, because you would expect the prices to inflate in as it comes yeah. here because of yeah. importing shipping. and shipping and stuff like that. Listen to that. <laughs> right there, dude. It nice. smells like fruit punch too, dude. It looks like fruit punch. it looks like one of those like uh, popsicles, creamsicles. Yes. And then he also made another one with that, like same same release date. They made a beer called Troll So Hard. <laughs> the green one in the, I was yeah. like, is that freaking uh, coloring a uh, food coloring in that? <laughs> Shit, I don't know how he made it green, dude, but. Like I know you can get sour, or like what watercress, dude. It does taste right? like it does smell like Gatorade, dude. <laughs> 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 like Kool Aid, like, right? Fruit punch Gatorade, dude. It smells like Kool Aid, exactly. More sour than um mm. than yours, dude. Oh, wow, very, very much so. Yeah, yeah. enamel peeler. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this will peel the paint off your car. Shit. <laughs> I don't he know, just bro. used a no. It's a really lac- good. He just used lacto. He didn't use PDO. He has like mixed culture, dude. But um, I know that because I tried to get, ask him for, uh, like you know, like, hey, dude, you mind sharing your your culture that you've been using? He's like, I'll share anything except for that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, sure. I get it because he's why, known for this. Why is that the most important thing? This is what makes his beer, like, um, that's what he gets. That's where he gets the acidity from. The, um, it's a super the flavor. High wow, it is. It is. Yeah. Question: Is there dregs that you can harvest from these? <laughs> no, because like the Berliner, you know, you boil it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. Kill, he kills it off. I know because I know sometimes they do a no boil. I am a huge fan of sours. I, I must say that again. <laughs> it's yeah. hearty. It's yeah, nice. Dude. Yeah. Holy shit. So yeah. I was with this guy in San Diego when he brewed a Berliner for Stone. Usually you boil for 15 minutes, right? If yeah. you just Stone want to kill. Stone is the, 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 the devil. The, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, gargoyle okay. and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gargoyle. Right, right. Just to pasteurize. Yeah, so they usually boil for 15 minutes, right? But for Stone, because it's such a expensive brewery with a lot of investments in it, it's like they wanted to brew it for an hour. But because when you boil it for so long, you kind of concentrate everything. Fuck, when I tried that shit, I was like, dude, it's like acid, dude. It fucking it really did burn the enamel off my teeth, dude. <laughs> but wow! But it's not necessarily a. It's not necessarily something that you're like, oh no, no, not again. Yeah, it's almost like you're sitting on the fences between pickled and oh yeah, yeah. it makes you good. want to go back for more. Yeah, like the, like, like the Nancy. Yeah, like it's, a sour mm-hmm. beer like this, you kind of want to take a but few it, sips. Yeah, it doesn't before even it doesn't even taste or smell sour. No, no, no. It smells sweet. Yeah, the aroma is still sweet. Like fruit punch. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, Matt, dude. Matt, you try this yet? But yeah, that's the thing, right? Like a, a bunch of people here like sour beers. Like uh, when we threw that beer event at um, Kitchen Lingo, everyone just wanted to sour. I had a 12% stout there too. Same thing with coconut and um, coffee from uh, Coffee Slut. And... They just wanted the sours, dude. So I feel like uh, that's what people want here. And then IPAs, too. Everyone wants the IPAs. So. Okay, is it? I have this question for you guys. Is it common for IPAs to sort of smell like, have like a like a stench to it, like a stinky smell? Like, like catty, like cat piss? <laughs> yeah, or dank? Like, like almost like a wet rag. Nah, no, no, nah. I don't think so. Maybe it was a cup that I was maybe here. maybe they Fuck did freaking shit. <laughs> what uh, restaurant did you try? Because <laughs> uh, I would never put my beer there. Though. Not, not name, not name. <laughs> an IPA was on top. Yeah, it was a, it was an IPA, and it's it's usually this IPA that I drink. That it's um, 
It's it's the Goose Island IPA. And it really smells, it always smells stinky for some reason. Nah, uh, I don't think it's supposed to stink, dude. Because okay. I've tried, I drink. Because they have Goose Island IPA like in the airplane too, bro. Like, yeah. And it's not, it doesn't stink. Was okay. it only Goose Island that you tried? Or was that it has, other beers? Uh, um, it's every from that time place. I drink that Goose Island. <laughs> you know, it could be the tap. Dirty Lines. Dirty, Dirty lines. lines, yeah. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I mean, this, I'm like, fuck, I want to drink this. But that, I'm like, Ugh. Hey, off the record, I'm gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, because uh, you ain't gonna serve no three chiefs. <laughs> so that's what we were talking about right, right, a while right. ago. Is right, like right. Um, um, intentionally soured versus wild yeast, unintentionally soured. So what you were tasting, like it freaking stinks. That's the one that was probably either wild yeast or you know. Um, like not on oh, purpose, right? Not, like, not on purpose, yeah. Sort of something stuck Accident. from the last, from the last, uh, from the last tap. Maybe, could be, yeah. yeah if you didn't be. sanitize it well, you know. You didn't change the lines. Yeah, is that a common thing that you should do when every you're... time sanitize, dude? Like, if your beers get infected, it's because you didn't really sanitize or clean well. You're probably like. A lazy, lazy guy who well, just fucking I mean, tried to clean I mean, that I, shit. I I I think the only thing I'm thinking of is at the tournaments, right, Matt? And, and Johnny, you can attest too. Alumni I mean, tournaments. Yeah, yeah, I mean the the cakes just go in and out, in and out, and yeah. in and out, and in and out, and in and out. Right, but yeah, like like when you're doing jujitsu and you don't clean your mats, bro, you get that ringworm. Exactly <laughs> like that, bro. Oh, you're gonna man. get that wild back <laughs> turn on your fucking skin, dude. <laughs> Yeah, clean I don't your know. Mat. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to say something here. Yeah, bro, fungus. Clean your clean your shit on the, and off the mat. Yeah, yeah. sanitation yeah. is important, right? Oh, yeah. beer is like eighty percent sanitation. Doesn't matter how much money, how much you know, how much whatever you put into your beer, you can just so much as accidentally cough into your beer, and you just threw hundreds to thousands of dollars away huh. just because. A bug flew in, or, or you're you know, dusting yeah. something off your shirt. You're like, oh shit! Yeah, you got your dog hair in there, dude. It's, you freaking, you know, like your fingernails are dirty. Yeah, exactly. Oh, for real. If you breathe yeah. into it, if it's if it's open and it's already cooled. So so um, protection wise, what are what are you trying? Face mask, hair net. I mean, prefer- <laughs> preferably you don't need to go to yeah. that extreme, but I mean, just you know. I, I, at least for a professional brewer. Fucking Tyvek. No, fucking dude, suit, dude. man. <laughs> Spandex. Fucking <laughs> Leo Tart. <laughs> fucking Ice Leo Tart. <laughs> <laughs> Leo Tart. They just <laughs> passionate. <laughs> you don't want to see what's under my Tyvek suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as as, as on these, we're the the system that these guys use, you know, everything's in pumps and isolated things, you know. But you don't have open air when you're racking onto the onto your your fermenter. You don't have the I have open air going in. You know, these guys have pumps and everything, so it's a little bit easier for them. It's just I see. So when you're transferring your beer, you have to open up, fucking pour. Not necessarily pour. I have a siphon. Okay. But you know, the siphon has to go through the top of the the boil kettle, and that exposes the air. If it's a windy day, if it's raining, whatever, if a freaking drop of, I don't know, but if a drop of rain gets in, right, if a bird can contaminate by the whole freaking, freaking flutters yeah, his wings exactly. right by you, right? It can contaminate the okay, whole beer, okay. yeah. And that's all sugar, dude. So, like, mosquitoes and shit, they're gonna be super attracted to that thing, you know? They love right. it, they love it. <laughs> Are you, do you have a mosquito problem? Yes, I stay near bamboos. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so stay, I mean, not, yeah. I mean, you stay in the fucking valley pretty much, bro. I mean. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I ask my girlfriend whenever it's a rainy day and there's mosquitoes in the air, there's flies outside, whatever it may be, I'm freaking lugging that huge ass, uh, you know, um, kettle inside my house because there's nothing, you know, it's, it's still air. And it's just being by myself and freaking carrying everything. But that's what you have to do. It's like I put too much time, too much money into this beer for some little freaking fly to get in. I'd rather just you know, <laughs> fuck shit up. Man, fuck shit up. I'd rather, you know, and a lot of times I don't have help. So, I'm, and, you know, I don't want to ask her to carry it. So I'm just freaking lugging it inside my house, putting it on my counter, racking it inside my house. And that's what you got to do. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> the troubles of a home brewer. Charles knows. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> dude. I remember one time I'm like, we're just drinking. We're all brewing together. And we're just like, you know, like, 
you drink a lot during the process and then uh you just get lazy so it's like oh shit never mind just clean that later so we <laughs> forgot to uh <laughs> empty out the grains dude so the next day dude that shit smell like garbage can dude it's like the that most, quickly yeah yeah because there's a bunch of like wild bacteria that's in there and it's starting to warm up so it's like just dirty grains bro yeah you know hey you ever try uh forgetting about your grains and just trying to clean it later yeah in my mash yeah they're stinky man stinks dude even even just like a couple hours later that thing will start to smell i would think here it's faster than than there yeah dude you just gotta clean shit right away that's why you call them boys <laughs> a lot of for cleanup. which i'm sure they're more than willing where you where you coin at brewing together right it's yeah, like, yeah we're doing this together guys we're drinking together we're I'll, doing it together i'll brew the beer you guys clean i'll give you the same amount of beer i get nice you know, uh, i mean yeah people. yeah i mean it, it all works out right yeah and you know like shit i want to teach these guys too bro because you know like i want them to geek out on that stuff so anything they can learn off of me, like shit, I'm willing to help, you know? Yeah. Oh, paying it forward is, is a real yeah. huge important thing. And you know, like we're not gonna forget the guys that helped us out. So Yeah. What are we drinking here, Johnny? Uh don't look at the label. You know, as a home brewer, the struggle is uh recycle and reuse bottles. So yeah. that's a different bottle. That's my beer. That's a a Trappist clone. So I try and do a Belgian Trappist um beer, which is pretty much like a few hundred years old, the recipe. Um yeah, it's a little dark. The yeast comes from Belgium. Uh, isolated from the Rochefort. Rochefort. I don't know the how to say it. Like the monks. The monks. the monks. Yeah, that's monk beer. Little history about this beer. Back in like the, you know, the 16th century, 17th century, when there was famine, what they would do is that they take the grain and transfer transform it into beer. And so if there's a dry, uh, you know, a drought or anything, and there's no grain, they have beers in their cellar, hundreds of cans or hundreds of bottles of beer. So they'll take their beer and drink it, and that's their caloric intake. That's their carbohydrate intake. That's that's their meal of the day. Because when grain doesn't last, the beer will last. Right. So. Wait, this is Imperial Stout? No, no, no. no don't look oh, at this. So, yeah, okay. yeah, no. Yeah, homebrew. Okay. Homebrew, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Re- reusing it. Reusing it. Can <laughs> you saw the color? Like, yeah. This looks more like a barley wine than an Imperial Stout. Bro, you need to dip that in uh, hot water, dude, and... Uh, <laughs> Or put a blow dryer to it and just peel it off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is just a classic Belgian double, nothing, uh, uh, Belgian single. Nothing um, over the top about it. I want the yeast and the malt to shine out more than any hops. You probably can't even taste any of the hops. I use uh, Hallerto and uh, Steering Goldings. Uh, very wow, low this is really good, too. Yeah, very low smooth. IBU. Very smooth. Yeah. Thank For you. being a darker beer? It's still a little young. What's yeah. the ABV? It came out to, uh, I think. Okay, I'm um, sorry. What is, what is it? Alcohol by volume. Okay, okay, okay. Like uh, alcohol I, percentage? Yeah, 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 okay, okay. It it didn't come up to the double standard, which I wanted it to. I guess I didn't put enough um, uh, sugar in it, but uh, it came out to about five, six, five, 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 six. Not as high as I wanted to, but. So was there like a scale or like a litmus paper or meters? Oh, are you it's, talking about for ABV? Yeah. Um, for the style or? Or just, just trying to test any. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so. AB, ABV of any um, any alcohol. So you got to, after you're done boiling, so right when you're about to ferment it, so before you pitch the yeast. Right. You want to know what the gravity of the sugar is, right? Right. So, um, so you check the gravity with like a hydrometer. Or like a density meter, or um, I use a one of these. It's like a thirty-five hundred dollar tool. Jeez. We check Plato, like what the density of sugar it's is. Big. It's small with a little <laughs> straw, dude. You know. Shit. So I check it. You check it before you pitch the yeast. Yeah. And then you check it again after it's done fermenting. So I would always check it like every two days just to see where it stops at, because the numbers will drop. And then you just divide those numbers. So when it drops and it stays steady for like a couple of days, then it's done fermenting. And then you check that, you divide it, you get the number, and it'll tell you what your percentage is. Ah, so. I see. I see. I mean, it's not like it's not like whiskey, right? The proof. 
they get the proof no. and then they divide it and that's the percentage of alcohol it is you know what it could be i just don't know how they measure it on the alcohol side because hmm. i know they do proof and then you times that by two and that's what you're or proof and then you divide that divide right, that right. By two. or is it the percentage and then you multiply it by two same shit, yeah, right? Same right? Shit. It's yeah, like yeah. Uh, 151 <clears throat> times two or divided by two is right. what your alcohol is, right, right? 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 So, but um, yeah, that's that's how you get the alcohol, dude. Or do you find out what the percentage is, or you can get an alkalizer. Shit, I don't know how much that thing costs. Though. What's the percent of, of uh, alcohol that beer is sort of the standard, right? Um, before it's like, nah, the same beer, dude. You know, this is way too high a percentage of alcohol. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't even know. Well, I think if you just ferment it, so you get the grains, you ferment it with just yeast, then I, I guess that's still beer. Yeah. But then once you start distilling it, like you boil it, distill it, and then you collect the distilled part of it, then that's like your spirits. So I think if you. As long as you don't distill it, then it's still beer. Like, um, the so place- it doesn't matter what the percentage of the beer is. No, no. Um, but I just don't know how they get the proof out of it, right. like the measurement. But um, so this place that we're we're working with, we co-op with. There was a brewery before us that was in there, so they had a tank full of stout, and it tasted like shit to me. I, I guess they brewed it in October. And it was still sitting there for a few months. You can age a stout, but for some reason, this shit didn't age well. But we're just like, hey, man, let's fucking dump this shit because we don't want it. And we want to start using these tanks. So the, the, the landlord guy was just like, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and distill it. And then once it's empty, then you guys can go ahead and use it. But once he distilled it, it was like clear, dude. It was like clear whiskey. But you smelt it, it smelled like chocolate. I was like, dude, that shit's cool. But, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, dude, but I don't know how they put it. How is that possible, that. though? I guess you just get the vapors from it, right? Condensation. Yeah. yeah. Those condensation. So that's, what the, that's where the taste would come from. That's where, like, the alcohol. Some of them will come <clears> from the beer because, uh, like, um, sochu is, like, uh, potatoes. So we distilled rice. the beer, yeah. but it still tastes like chocolate. It didn't I don't have know a if clean it tastes taste. like chocolate, but it had the smell. Oh, smell. Sorry. Yeah, because the taste is just like alcohol. Okay. Like straight up alcohol, dude. <laughs> like, damn. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that was interesting. That was some cool shit. So now there's, there's um, I don't know if you tried Jameson's own cask, cask, cask whatever. Like uh, urban barrel aged ca- uh, whiskey. Yeah, they use the, stout they age. use, uh, they age their whiskey in stout barrels. And so now, because right now what people do is that they age their, their stouts or whatever beer in whiskey barrels. Mm-hmm. But what Jameson did is they reversed it and they aged their whiskey in beer in barrels that were fermented with beer. And how did it change their whiskey? It, uh, I mean, you, you wouldn't really tell too much of it. Uh, some smokiness comes out, but any, any of the whiskeys will have smokiness because of the peat or whatever. But right. um, there wasn't too much of a distance, uh, uh, too much of a difference, but it was still cool, you know. It was it was uh, fermented and or aged in beer barrels instead of the other way around. Because like you said, it's more common for craft beers yeah. to be so aged they use in whiskey barrels. Not only whiskey, but it depends on the kind of kind of beer. But you can do wine barrels, whiskey barrels, tequila barrels, rum barrels. I know you guys did a rum barrel. Why is that? Well, uh, just for flavor. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, it makes sense. I tried some wine that was aged in bourbon barrels too from Robert Mandavi. That was cool because I like full bodied wines. I like Cabernets and. Shit, I guess when once it was into a full bodied beer, mm-hmm. like you know, like H and that, it was pretty good, dude. And it's like not even expensive too. It's like probably like a twenty dollar bottle. Sometimes you really taste it. I forgot which Russian river was it, supplication, one of the temptation. I forgot which one, but they age it in uh in wine barrels and you can really taste the white wine, the Chardonnay coming out of it. Uh, just like with bourbon, if you taste something that was bourbon versus not bourbon, you would t- it was it's night and day. If you taste a regular stout that was fermented traditionally versus a, a stout that was aged in a bourbon barrel, you would totally taste the difference. Yeah, it's like more complex, dude. Yep. But they charge more for it. You know, <laughs> say, hey, here's a $200 barrel. Just put some beer in it, and it just gives it a different complexity. Right. There's so. some. There's some breweries that live 
buy only bourbon barrels or not only bourbon but buy barrels the only con- uh, condition age whatever secondary fermentation in, in barrels only <clears throat> they don't even use is it most common to put it in kettles or kegs or it depends yeah like it's just easier just to um ferment it in stainless like tanks versus putting them in barrels you know mm-hmm. um and you can put them out faster well because you're not losing the alcohol too right because when you fill up a barrel, the wood will eventually absorb the alcohol and evaporate it out, and then evaporate it out, and then and English then when the season change, it'll push the alcohol back out of the wood. Because that's how whiskey is done, right? Yeah. So whiskey goes in as um, as moonshine, yeah. right? Very clear, clear. And then they put it in the burnt barrel, and then and then as as it ages. As the seasons change, the pressure would change and the temperature would change. The contraction. So, yeah, right, yeah. right. And so the the barrel would actually, a full barrel would become a quarter barrel. Yeah, angel because, share. Right. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. then as the season changes, it'll fill back up again, but oh, only up to like three-fourths, right? So you're to age it in barrels, you're actually sacrificing beer. The volume for volume. quality, though. Right, you know? right, right, right. So that's why, like... There's people that charge thirty five dollars for a bottle now, man. Like this size bottle right here, um, Wakefield will charge like thirty five dollars, forty dollars a bottle, if it was aged in a barrel. People would pay that, and they got people camping out the night before for that shit. Dude. They could resell that bottle for three hundred, four hundred dollars or more. Yeah, yeah. Like with his antiques, I mean, you can buy a, bo- a, ba- a bottle for whatever they're selling it at, and do they have I like can't. beer expos where people are selling these? These uh, off market no, beers? No, it's all uh, like secondary Silk, or Silk in Road. person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go to, um, there's a place called Beer Advocate. Okay. And um, that's where you f- find people who are s- trading beers or looking for beers. Um, you can go Beer Advocate, you can go to Rate Beer. Um, shit, man. You know what? A lot of people here should start doing untapped. And start checking in yeah. like the beers they like and reviewing it's it an because, app. and that'll help like, like your local brewery. Like, hey man, this beer sucks. Like, give it a two, <laughs> or this beer is great. Good, give yeah. it a five. You kind of want to give recognition to the breweries that are making really good beers. You know, show them like the the Yelp review star type of thing. Right, you know? right, right, right. So. That prevents the bubble from tapping because like, okay, I have a hundred beer. <clears throat> I have a hundred and fifty breweries in California to pick from. I go on Yelp or Untapped or whatever, and I'm only looking for these amount of beers. Everyone else is not getting my money's worth. Yeah, and the because, curve doesn't necessarily change, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're pretty much weaning out the people who aren't having good quality, and it shows with, with, the, with the customers. So yeah, it's good. Thank God for the internet. Right? It's like uh, they're like, man, this brewery isn't getting recognized for the good shit that they have. They're not making that much money because nobody is really. Giving them their credibility, you know? Right. While these guys are, like, getting so much fucking good ratings. But just because the other people don't know these guys, you know? And I don't know. Who knows? Maybe these guys will shut down because the only ones that are paying their bills are just locals. Maybe there's not enough locals or, you know? You got to kind of, like, represent them, too. Right. So... Gentlemen, yeah, that was a. I believe we can go for My hours and hours. Goodness. Yeah, we could, we could, you we know, could. But maybe next year when we come back. Or no, yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely been a, a, a very educational, and I'm pretty sure everyone listening is like taking down notes too. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is this two three chiefs location at? Did I get any hints? Where Still, uh, uh, what Signal Hill, Los Alamitos. <laughs> <laughs> could, could be my IP address is bumping everywhere. <laughs> I'm throw off the bad guy, right? Yep. <laughs> but um, before before we cut out of here, um, just I just want to thank you guys, dude. I think I think what you guys are doing is is changing the culture here, right? Yeah. Because the culture has been the same for decades and decades, mm-hmm. and it's about time that 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 people start coming out and. And start start changing changing what society is believed to be, right? And that goes for for all forms of art. I consider you guys what you guys are doing is an art form, 
because you literally have to 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 pay attention to the details and the intricacies of dude and literally be meticulous about what you're doing every single time yeah right yeah and from you johnny going being a home brewer wanting to be a micro wanting to open up your own brewery here in guam where where it's difficult to you charles dude where you're you're on the verge you i mean yeah you sit you sit in a big pond with a lot of fish but now you're at that phase where shit we're brick and mortar now yeah now we can actually start doing stuff let's see where we stand yeah right yeah do you do you do you sort of like have a uh, a prediction of how things are going to turn out or i'm still uh, confident i mean like if i was doubting myself dude i probably wouldn't even do this shit you know but um i've heard so many good things about the stuff that i do i like the beers that i've been producing so far um you know still being humble you know like still taking other everybody else's feedbacks and critiques i still take that to heart um you know like i'm my i'm my worst critic if I think something's good, then I'm going to be like, oh, shit, this shit's good, you know, like, but if I have a beer that I'm not so confident about, I still probably would have been, like, put it out there. Give it to the boys that clean. <laughs> <laughs> Say, hey, we'll put that to the stash. That's our uh, work beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, do you, what do you think Johnny needs to do to sort of make the industry happen here? On Guam? Yeah, being being a homegrown. You just got to keep passing out your beers, dude. Pass it out to everybody. Let them taste it because only you can... Prevent forest fires. <laughs> right, right? Dude. I, I feel you, though. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, but yeah, I the more people that try your beers, the better, right? Yeah. So, You're creating, sort of creating value, right? Yeah. yeah. You give out... <laughs> That's sort of the way the culture here works. For hey boy, can you just give me some uh, some free ones? <laughs> my mentality I'll, I'll is pass it man. off to my boy. <laughs> Wells Park. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll buy it, it later. We'll buy it. Uh, you know, in your next batch. My mentality is always the beer comes before the money. Right. right. I, can, I mean, I can sell everything I make, no dude, problem. I mean, man. I feel you, dude. With with everything, but with with, with what I'm doing here yeah. with the podcasts. I, I found that I needed to be passionate first before I, before anything else yep. can come out of it. Yeah. I mean, without passion, dude, where where else would it be? Yeah. You, you, sort, of, you yeah. sort of would lose the love for it. Yeah. Like if you're just thinking of chasing the money, then you're, you're probably not going to make good stuff because now you're just being pressured and releasing some shitty shit. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the difficulty that a lot of us here on Guam really face with trying to trying to break out of that corporate corporate way and kind of find that entrepreneurial way it's it's very hard dude i mean fuck it's it's incredibly hard to sort of break through mm -hmm. and make a following we almost have to break out of break out of guam in order to make it right not not in a sense of leaving here but expanding the borders making yeah. the borders wider right? yeah yeah, I think it's, I think it's gonna be super hard for me, man, because there are a lot of breweries out there, and now I'm just like, shit, dude. Now I gotta kind of stand, like, shine and stand out, you know, like, versus everybody else that's out there. Well, stay true to what you're doing. Right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like, you know, you can't always, because I, you know, like I do go on Untapped and I do read other people's reviews and I do hear people saying like, oh, this is too sweet or oh, this is too roasty. And I'm just like, have you seen any reviews on your beers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time I do look at them, but I. You can't please everyone. Yeah, you know, sometimes you can't always. You're not gonna change your recipe based on what that guy thinks, you know. Yeah. That's the thing, dude. And it's, it's like, like you're like, not gonna change your questions based on what people think about your podcast. Right, 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 right. You like, brew what you want to brew. Right. People like, want to drink. Yeah, man. It's like, hey, thanks for trying our beers. You know, like. We're not like. Like burger king bro you're not gonna have it your way all the time you know it's yeah. like shit if you if you don't like it thanks for coming thanks for trying it out um we're probably not the kind of brewery for you you know like but tell us what you like and maybe we can send you to the guys next door who who makes something that's more inviting to you but like like we're just yeah. we're we're different bro like i wouldn't i would have been entering my beers in uh like a 
like one of those national contests and shit yeah. you know just because like i do kind of steer my way out of the style a little bit just to kind of stand out more but that's what you need to do yeah, yeah. but it doesn't sound like you're trying to gain validity from anybody no no it's just the stuff that i like to drink dude and it's like i've drank so many beers out there and like i know what i like yeah and those are the kind of beers that i'm gonna drink and so you and you sort of know how they're supposed to taste right i do yeah yeah and you know what the thing about this is what i think like people on the west coast like they're very safe the way they make beers and in the east coast they're very avant-garde yeah, yeah like, oh like they're just like hey <laughs> dude i don't know man they just do their own shit and right, I feel right. like, what was your thing fuck it throw it in. <laughs> fuck just it just fuck it yeah fuck it dude oh, i did a i did a speech over at inspired guam um shit the next one they have that you guys should definitely johnny did it yeah you should definitely come out dude i mean it'll definitely inspire people to to want to do stuff but yeah basically my message was because we live in a place that we do, I mean, Guam, everyone's judging you, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Worry about what people have to say about what you're doing and how you're doing it and, and, the, and the, the way you're doing it? Or you can just say, fuck it and yeah. do it, right? I agree, man. Yeah. I agree, dude. <clears throat> Which is why we're sitting here today, gentlemen, <laughs> saying bad words on the talk show. Hey, yeah, fuck hey, it. The more you drink, <laughs> dude, uh, the truth comes out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah. But you know what? Like, we had that beer fest on uh sunday dude like everyone was like plastered and everyone was happy bro you know like we had the dance floor filled with a bunch of <laughs> fucking guys <laughs> dancing with crazy shit bro we had like two we had like fucking black belts doing some crazy shit dancing. that i would never know you know like all right dude did that guy just get like 10 times more sexier like asking the chicks like hey what do you think of that guy now like that guy's cool as fuck huh with the accent he's, right? not, uh, <laughs> he's not so uh shy anymore <laughs> it's like i was like oh fuck sometimes it brings the best of us out yeah. or, or, was, the or the worst of us i mean but i mean i feel like i feel like when you drink beers like this and you're not overdoing it, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't force you to overdo it. That's or, what I tell my or, mom. Or become something, <laughs> or become something other than what you want to represent yourself yeah. as. I mean, look, we've we've gone through how many bottles and cans of beer and yeah, like six, and we all shared with each other, yeah. and yeah. it's it's and it's been chill, right? Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, and percentages that God. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to hit you before you drink a shitload, you know, like uh, you drink those lighter beers, you're going to be drinking a shitload just to get that buzz, dude. Next thing you know, like when it finally comes, you drink way too much of that shit. <laughs> like, oh shit, now I have it. But it's Talk like, shit, taking those five shots and uh, down those two beers. <laughs> They're finally coming, dude. Yeah. But um, uh, before we before we head out of here, any last words from either of you? You can promote anything you want, put anything out you want. Uh, the floor is yours. Whoever wants to go first. I don't. Well, I don't really got too much to say. Uh, at least as far as like uh, working your passion, I always go by Winston Churchill. I don't even know if he's the one who said it, but uh, <laughs> no. But there, there, there's passion. speculation, passion. but uh, success is going is success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm, which means you can keep failing and failing and failing. But if you're still passionate about it, you will succeed and you will come on top. Just Talk don't to worry us. about failure. You will succeed. Just keep pushing at it. And that's beer. what beer is. You fail and you fail. And then you fail some more. And then you start succeeding. And then and then you probably fail again. Then you'll fail, then you'll fail again. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't even tell you how many times. But, you know, that's what it is. You, you can't let it bring you down. Even with beer, with brewing, with business, with art, whatever it is. Just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, you'll come out. you come out. you come out fine. You want to promote your stuff how people can follow you um, and, the only way you can follow me is on instagram pretty much i'm sorry if i don't have beers for sale uh i'm just trying to keep my keg taps full i'm where charles was years ago i just want enough to have for my family friends and more and for me and um just wait and hopefully soon um my brewery will pop up in the next few years and you get to try the beer. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll trade you for it. <laughs> hey, whales part whales. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, uh, I just like to say thank you to everybody um, out here trying our beers, um, giving it a chance. Um, if you like it, 
you can find them at um, Foodies, Mosa's, Kitchen Lingo. Hopefully, we're able to serve it at more places than just those those three. But um, yeah, man, continue to drink it. If you like it, we'll send more. If you guys don't like it, we'll probably stop sending it. <laughs> you know. So, but uh, thanks. From what I've tried tonight, don't stop. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a it's a passion of mine, dude. So. It would suck to see it fail. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I would like to send more. Uh, how can people follow you? Uh, you can go on Instagram. It's uh, Three Chiefs Beer. Um, three with a three or three? Spelt with three. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can spell it out. T R C H R R K L K. You know I spell three. T R E E. Street Chief Street and Jiro <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Instagram and uh, No Snapchat <laughs> Facebook <laughs> Yeah Facebook Facebook We got Facebook So you guys can follow that it's, We have a website uh, ThreeChiefsBrewing.com But it's still kind of In the works Just because we're still Kind of being secret On the, the Official opening Right But um Any Any um Like Master round of exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> well, just like a just like a um, sort of estimated. You know what? Um, we're shooting for August. Okay. Yeah, soft opening in uh, El Segundo. So if you have any of uh, your friends that are uh, listening in, once will be released. When in August? Because I'll be. I would say mid August. So I don't have an official date. <laughs> Maybe the 18th. <laughs> I gotta look at my calendar, bro. I was like, oh. shit, when are we gonna be? I gotta confirm more than I. I'll 18th. be in the states. I'll be in the states, uh, but I'll be in the Bay Area, so I don't know. It's a uh... dude. Find a mule. <laughs> That's what <laughs> find we call a it. Mule. <laughs> yeah, we find a. Uh, we call it mules. Guys who uh, line up at the breweries yep. and get beers for uh, yep, for the yep. boys and stuff. Huh. But um, once we find out what the release date, we're probably gonna do fa bottled. So we'll have that bottled and. Uh, if you know anyone who's gonna show up for the release date, dude, we'll have them for sale. Cool. And um, probably gonna be limited to like 200 bottles or less. But we'll we'll be sure to have a bunch of cool beers and shit. And uh, I think we spoke to 56 Hope, so oh, I think they're live they're, band. Yeah, we'll have some live bands and some food. You know, probably Guajan Grill or something. Nice. But that's unofficial right now. But we're we're gonna beg them to uh, serve. Cool. August XP. Yeah, um, uh, hey, Cali. but hey, the locals for the first. California. Dude. The Cali locals. Yeah. For like, Anybody have miles? I can borrow. <laughs> Just need 75000 to get to LA. I'll, I'll bring you beer back. I'll bring your beer back. <laughs> uh, dude, I wouldn't be surprised if people are doing that. I'm sure, dude. dude right. People are already calling right now. Prim. Paro, give you my, my miles, bro. I got like 55,000 miles. <laughs> I can already hear people I, calling up I want cousins. two growlers Prim right. Dude, three chiefs Get it <laughs> Puff a butt I heard it on that podcast <laughs> <laughs> What is that? What is that? What station is that? <laughs> dude. Guys, thank you That's Thank no you, dude it's, it's been extremely educational It's been extremely fun Sharing the beers Tasting the beers And um, God, I hope you guys are jealous Listening Because <laughs> I would be I honestly would be And I, I, when do you get to ch- when do you get the chance to try these beers, dude? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, dude. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm feeling good right now. Yeah, I'm bro. feeling pretty good yep. too. I'm pretty sure my breath. I didn't is even need. Uh, I didn't even need any of that CBD oil or anything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, how about a CBD oil infused uh, IPA? Yeah. Did you? Is that? I've done like, it before though. Okay. Not CBD, but we <clears throat> did put some uh, legalized yeah. weed in there. Extracts. Nice. Yeah. But I know you can get CBD coffee at a uh, coffee. Slut. Coffee slut. There you go. Yeah, yep. dude. Yeah. Shout out. Coffee slut will get the shout outs in my other episode. In the episode before this, dude. Yeah, seriously, Melker yeah. and, and Coffee Slut. They're. Thanks to those guys, yeah, dude. They, Rose, made, dude. they made uh, Faha well, happen, they're, dude. They're changing it up too, right? I was asking Melker about Coffee Slut. He's like, yeah, put a put a crazy name out there. See how people accept it, you know, receive yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And Shit, you see the sizes, <clears throat> dude? It's like, what is it? Like, there's a... Slutty, oh, slutty, a, uh, naughty. <laughs> for God, for You know, like, it's not grande and verde. Hey, and that's hey, a hey. trip, though. I was like, hey, <laughs> fuck, people drink it, dude. It's cool, dude. Right. You know, like, sometimes I want to say shit like that. 
but yeah. I can't call but it. But sometimes you gotta say fuck it. Fuck <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For reals, dude. We're changing the culture, dude. I mean, not not for the worse, but definitely for, for the, the better. better. Right. Yeah. yeah. All the influences that the world has given us um, has definitely fucking changed the way we are perceiving how our world should be. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. Yeah. Dude, thanks for having thanks me. For having yes. us, thanks for having us. Thank you guys. And thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Maddie loves you. B in spirit, he loves you. I love you. Peace out until next time. See ya. Hey, thanks so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Um got a little got a little rowdy on my side here. You know, when I when I drink some beers, I get um get a little loud on the loud end it's, i like i like to laugh i'm a laugher at least i'm not an aggro uh drinker there so um i just like to give a special shout out to our sponsors moses joint serving up the best <clears throat> island's best chow happy hours and vibes wrapped into one package dimension systems providing the best computer and it solutions on island since 1987 uh to stroke Use the code word MASTERGU and get $10 off your next ride. And last but not least, Tommy's Pizza, where you can seriously eat good New York-style pizza made in Guam, made by locals, made with love. Eat good pizza. Don't forget to support us on Patreon. Be a $2 supporter, $5 supporter, whatever you want. You can do it. Uh, this is where you can literally grow with us and watch us grow in, in different ways. Uh, it's a slow growth right now, but um, you'll be the first to know when the growth does happen. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, uh, do yourself a favor and go down, scroll all the way down on the iTunes, on the Apple Podcast app, on the Master Random page, and you'll find the ratings and give the podcast a rating. That'll be super dope. So thank you again for listening to the podcast and thanks again for being the baddest.